What's up, everybody? Welcome to Flagrant 2. Um, it's your boy Schultz. I'm here with Akash Singh, Alex Media. Dove Mammon is in the um, passenger seat right now as Mark is still getting feasted on by the Rona. Dove is out. He's officially corona-free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Technically. Technically. You still have corona. You've tested positive for corona. <laughs> What? <laughs> I think we should be able to oh, talk about this. Yeah, you didn't tell. We no. should. He he just got a test. He's filled with corona. He's fucking riddled with it. But since it's been two weeks since what you had a symptom or something like that, you're allowed back out. Two weeks since onset of symptoms, and that's like super safe. Ten days is good. Exactly. Days is good. Good. But technically, he still got corona. Moderate to severe asthma. Actually. I know. So, so. <laughs> he still right got there. corona. <laughs> I just want to point out, he still got corona. Technically. All right. Hey, we all got antibodies, bro. We good. Shit. Mark makes me feel different right now. Mark is still getting feasted on, man, and he's having a rough time he's doing dying, it. He's dying, though. He's he's fucking dying, bro. <laughs> Did you guys laugh every time? You say oh, yeah, he's dying. Yeah. Oh, it's funny. It's who sad. wanted who wanted Florida more than Mark? Oh, that's true. who believed in Corona less, less than, than Mark. Mark. Yeah, who was true. more flippant than Mark this whole time? I know that last one, but you got it. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker was disrespectful to the virus, yo. Yeah. No respect. He does. He would he take does. his mask off everywhere, bro. And he he just, every time he would just do. So Mark, when he's in the spin cycle, does waiter hands. Yeah. Mark, when he doesn't care, does like a one of these. But hey, Mark, you're not wearing a mask. I mean, you know, you get sick. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's the whole Akash shit. is loving Mark being sick. By I, the way. Nobody is more happy about Mark being <laughs> sick than Akash. You're right about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know how good it is to not be sick for us? Yo, Corona's really worked out for you, yo. It's been great, dog. You took out your competition in New York. Oh, wow. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. You go back to New York, you're going to be up at every single club because you damn near killed all the old people that are yep. doing comedy. The only one to keep me out is Colin Quinn. Motherfucker made it. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Shouts to CQ, man. Can't take out CQ. No. Um, you destroyed another podcast. Yo, hey, you our destroyed Patreon a podcast. You destroyed a podcast that uh, that that spread a rumor about you. You right? You goddamn right. I forgot. That's hey. payback, bro. Hey, hyenas. Bye, Hinas. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to have Giannis on the pod today. As a matter of fact. Oh, really? Yeah, we were, and then he couldn't come down for some reason. Maybe because there's a Rona outbreak over here. That maybe, be. maybe. He couldn't, he's one person who cannot get it again. Yeah, yeah. He, that almost broke him, bro. Yeah. I called him once, dude, and he sounded like Marlon Brando on the fucking <laughs> Godfather. <dude. laughs> I was like, how you doing up there? Man, it, <laughs> I don't know what it's like. <laughs> it's taking over my brain. It's taking over my body. I just need to get a test. I'm like, why don't you go to the hospital? I can't leave the house, man. <laughs> Breathing is hard. Thing is hard, bro. Dude, it was some long days for him, bro. I'll tell you about Yanni long days. Oh, Yanni yeah. was going through some long days with that. Yeah. Corona. Yo, bro. Um, Yo. Yeah. For the benefit of everyone watching, could you pull your shorts down a little stud? You're showing, <laughs> you're showing mad thigh meets. I'm going wear compression shorts, son, bro. Son. Like, you got to see how you look right now, son. That's <laughs> wild, son. Yo, you got bad bitch confidence with those yeah, shorts. You son. really do. I got some legs, though. You so got let's legs. be I honest, you. bro. I've had a whole new level of confidence in my legs ever since I came out here. I'll be on the motorcycle, bro. And when I wear these shorts on my motorcycle, bro, <laughs> it looks like I'm not wearing anything, dude. Yep. <laughs> It looks like that right now. And I'm telling you, I see like gangsters out here, like Haitian gangsters with the fucking weird dreads that go up like Krusty the Clown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Kodak shit. That Kodak shit. I see them double taking me, bro. <laughs> Yo, yeah, I how see can them somebody be that gay? Son? <laughs> son, That's disrespectful. I see them double, but the legs go back to me. <laughs> so I can see me. The legs are different, bro. Look at that shit right there. Oh my mm. God. Oh. oh my God. That's a nice little step. Now, if it wasn't so hairy, it'd be all right. Yeah, I guess I got to handle The level of hair. hair is repulsive, though. Anyway, so uh, what's going on this week, man? We had a bunch of shit to talk about. We had a lot going on. We yeah. could talk about uh, Ted Cruz. Everybody going after Ted Cruz, man. I know we spoke about it on the Patreon, but I've been thinking a lot about this. Um, I don't... Uh, I've been, Yeah, okay. So here's the thing. I don't blame him for leaving. He left his dog, yo. That I get. That's the most <laughs> relatable... That's the most relatable shit I've ever seen... You were just in Aruba recently, right? Was your dog with you? No. Okay. Have any of y'all taken your dog on vacation? Yeah. When? On vacation did you take your dog? I have taken my dog on vacation. When? 
When we came to Miami, before we lived That's here. That's not vacation, motherfucker. No, no, no. Before we lived here, yeah. took a trip to Miami, brought yeah. the dog. Taking a trip to San Diego, brought the dog. Aruba is like international. Yo, that's some pussy ass it's shit. Easy, His dog is like a rat. Yeah, you so can take, like you can fly yeah, you with your dog. You got the same ass dog as me. First oh, of all, watch your fucking mouth when you talk about happy, <laughs> it's yo. It's a cute right. rat. Why you talking about? Yeah, you got yo, right. right. I'll be honest with you though. The leaving the dog shit. Anytime I can leave my dog, I leave my dog. <laughs> oh, I love my we dog. Know. But anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Not any time. I got Mark living on the property. I can't wait till he's not getting feasted on so he can just look after my fucking dog when I got to go places. <laughs> okay? He don't know that. Hey, bro, Mark, can you look after the dog? Bro, I love it. It's amazing. Okay, <laughs> Dove, can you walk the dog while we go out to dinner with me Sean, and my there's dog? There's a That's video Dove sent me of you walking your dog in the rain. Oh, yeah. It's oh, the yeah. funniest yeah. fucking video <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've ever seen. I never life. related to uh, your boy Ted Cruz more. <laughs> <laughs> you look so mad. You can only see Andrew from the back walking mad, fucking slant footed out here. I so sold her. Mad slant footed. <laughs> I look like Larry King. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look back. like I'm being hoisted to heaven. Isn't that what Larry King looked yeah, like? No, for like sure. Somebody had him by the suspenders, sure. like, come on, Larry, it's time. Nah, you was walking like Phil Jackson in that video. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. You, you had the Phil Jackson going on. You can't see his face at all, but you can tell he's never been less happy in his life, mm. bruh. Yeah. <laughs> My dog jumping around all willy nilly because she don't know what rain is, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Stupid ass dog. Stupid you know what I mean? She don't know she gonna fuck up the furniture. Like she don't understand things. <laughs> I'm just looking at this dog. Like you know how long it's gonna take to dry your ass? Oh bro? yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> so leave the dog. I get that 100. Nah, percent That's vile. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. That's no. vile. Okay, okay. No heat. That little ass dog. Say what? No heat for that little ass it's dog. It's built out of warmth. Nah, dog. That little. That could go. No, 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 no. Dogs don't have houses. Dogs that small don't survive, bro. Yes, they do. Those them dogs. How we got them? We bred them motherfuckers for the house. No, 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 no. there's like a chart of what. Okay, what kind of dog is it? It's a little multi pool. Are you sure about that? Yeah, look at the picture. His name is Snowflake. Ironically, ain't that some shit? Hilarious. Ain't that some shit? Hilarious. Look at looking out the window. Back to Ted Cruz. Hold on. Back to Ted Cruz. So leaving the dog, I hundred percent get because it's not a vacation if you have your dog. Yeah. It's almost not a vacation if you have your kids. I believe that too. It's a poodle. No, that's a full-grown poodle. Bro, look at that window. Look at that that window. That's a little tiny-ass dog. That window next to it. Nah, that's a full-grown poodle, bro. You know, full-grown poodle. That's a full-ass grown poodle. It's an ugly-ass dog. I'm gonna be honest. Anyway, back to this. So Ted Cruz leaves the dog. Right? Hundred percent understand leaving the dog. Never. But you have. That's the thing. You're being in fake. In the house? Leave it in the house? You want to leave it outside the house, Akash? You leave it at a daycare. It's fucking freezing outside. You're in the middle of an ice storm. Friends. Where would you leave your house? You've got the whole fucking house. My house. Where would you leave the dog? <laughs> Not in my house. With friends. Stop it. At a doggy daycare. Shouts to pop culture. Why wouldn't you have somebody check on the house? You better have a security guard or somebody check on the house. The security guard was checking on the house. But everybody's going through no fucking electricity, no water. Yeah. Like, you're going to... Tax somebody to go in a fucking winter storm. How we know his house doesn't have it? Freezing dog. That's why they left. No, they left because he didn't want to deal with all the bitch assness that was going on in Texas. He it's left because like he didn't have no heat. Getting cut. Are you out. sure? Yes. Yes. Yo, y'all are being fake right now. <laughs> now y'all are really I've being never fake. Left our dog at no, the house. y'all are being fake. Oh, don't Ever. say y'all. I get rid of the dog. Thank you. I just run it back and get a new one. After Yo, that. I took my dog to the fucking vet. You the dog told me. You it, it, the vet fake. told me it was a thousand dollars. I told my girl to her face. I go, we could buy a brand That's, new dog. Leave it there. Run it back. A thousand dollars, a brand new dog with none of these problems. Son, that's why they started hey, making hey, toy hey, dogs because they hey. toys. Leave them toys there. There we go. And I love my dog. You can't buy one of your dogs for no thousand dollars. You know, good and goddamn well you can't. I buy spent one a thousand back home in New York, and then another thousand here, and then I was like, if this happens again, we could buy a new one. Mm. Mm. So if it's a, Why it's a problem. Why do you pet insurance, son? Insurance? Say again? Pet insurance, bro. The pet insurance. It's the only insurance that's worth it. Yeah, I do have pet insurance. I don't know what the fucking deal with it is. I don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you had to just get your dog, like let your dog die? Say get what? another one? Yeah. That's no, I don't want that dog to die. I don't want the dog to die. That's not it. I just don't want to fill out paperwork. I don't want to do any of that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I end up just paying for things because I don't want I don't want to do paperwork. My point is, that's valid. I can't believe you're making the argument that you should bring your dog on vacation. You're a liar. You went to Aruba. You didn't bring your dog on vacation. I didn't leave him at the house. Where'd you leave him? Doggy daycare. So with a bunch of other dogs, you could fucking gnarl on your dog's stupid face the entire time. You have no clue. 
Oh, we have clues. We get no videos. Clue. We get videos. You don't get no videos. You got to look on their Instagram story if you want to no, see what's happening with your dog. Different daycare, bro. Shouts to Pups at Play in Montclair, New Jersey. There you go. <laughs> you know, okay. We out here. Okay. Point is, yeah, I get you left your dog. We, also, we get some free boarding for that. You left your dog. So is the issue leaving the dog or is it leaving it in the it's house? It's leaving it at the house stranded. Now, question. No heat. Question. If you stayed in Texas, which is what you wanted them to do. Yeah. Ted Cruz. Wh- hold on. Where would they be? At the house, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With how much heat? Yeah. Find a place for the No, dog. no, no, no. How much heat? Uh, hey. No, 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 no. Answer the question. Don't wriggle out of it. How much heat? They have the heat of love. No, 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 no. The warmth no. of human bodies. Uh, so the, the warmth of human bodies. Right, right, right. So, in other words, the same amount of zero heat. No. Oh, my God. That's a different... We going to really do... Am I talking to a woman? <laughs> am I talking to a woman right now? We're not going to have a logical fucking discussion right now. How much heat would be in the house if they're there with the dog? <laughs> The same no heat, right? Yeah. So you're okay sure. with the dog having no heat as long as humans are there, but you're not okay with the dog having no heat if there are no humans. Send the dog and your wife and kids to motherfucking Cancun and you stay and handle business. Yes. Well, now, now, now we're getting to where I want to go. Now we're close to where I want to go. Okay? Long ass way to get there. <laughs> no, no, because I'm arguing with a fucking female the whole time. Just I'm asking you a simple point. fucking question. Would you Just allow your dog to put? I can't because of you. Is the dog warm? And there's love. The heat of <laughs> yeah, love. Yeah. Says that shit. The Who's dog's going to be warm because I, of love? Who is that? <laughs> This know. dog is cold because there's not enough love. The guy I with the IG love for his dog. I know exactly how much a dog weighs from looking at the fucking picture of him in yeah, the door. Yeah, yeah I know. He's, he's a poodle. He's happy. a multi-poo. I don't know. I think all dogs are big. So. <laughs> it's not a fucking dog if it's not. My point is. My point is. The point I'm trying to make is this. You're okay with the dog being cold in the house already. This is, let's just be logical. You're okay with the dog freezing his ass off as long as human beings are freezing their ass off with it. You didn't say take the dog and send it somewhere warm. You said be at home with the dog. Did you not? Sure, sure. Okay, Okay. let's go. We're getting somewhere. Thank you very much. So, why don't you do this? Leave the fucking dog there. Let other human beings take care of the dog while you go on vacation. Why can't you do that? That's better. That's my suggestion from the beginning. I said multiple times, have somebody else take care of it. Leave it with a friend. They proved it. They did. The guy kept on checking it. If I'm going to leave, let me find a friend who got power. Here, you take the dog. We can't. I thought no one has power. Some people had power. It was that's part of the problem. Some people had some people didn't lose power, didn't lose anything. And other people. people. That's what they think. Like rich suburbs in Dallas, for a fact. I got friends that are like, bro, I didn't lose power. Hotels with generators. People were there is options. Leaving the dog at the house, that's where I'm like, bro, there's options. If we in the house together, I'm not looking at options. We just trying to survive. If I'm fucking escaping, leave the dog with somebody. Don't just leave the motherfucker at the house alone. Leave that dog in the house, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I believe in it. That's yeah. Why. I mean, it makes more sense to leave it with somebody, yeah. but I'm so it's dug in on this argument yeah. Yeah. that I'm like leaving yeah. the fuck out. Now house. who's the woman? <laughs> now who's Ooh. the woman? Now I'm the woman. Okay. Now I'm the woman. That's you made woman. me become a woman by okay. you being so That's emotional be doing, about bro. this argument. That's what I be doing. I know. I know. You're very good at it. I you're very good you, at, son. Yeah, yeah, I you're, transform you're very you. good at feminizing. I do that shit. I do that shit, yo. Listen, so you want the dog to be taken care of sure yes you can't empathize with someone who just wants to leave their dog and leave their responsibility so they can enjoy cancun you did it in aruba not so you like must be that. able to empathize not like that no, no 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 what did when you decide to put your dog somewhere else to yes. go to aruba what yes. were you thinking what would be best for the dog or what would be best for you i gotta go i can't bring this kid what's the best option to dog where i can take a vacation and he's taken care of it's a dog it's not a kid yeah. and you could bring it you could bring it you could no. find a hotel that Allows to accommodate uh, dogs. No, if you try, and this is where Cancun, it's it's valid. If you're like international, it's just different. They're not like you got to have like different shit. You got to try a little harder. Hmm. <laughs> you might you have enough care time. a little bit more. We booked the ticket. Car. Oh, it was, it was too last minute. Yeah, yeah. You were so just thinking about you guys. So that's where I can understand. Well, why don't you think about it ahead of time and think so, about your dog? Do you care? Your kid. I'm sorry, your kid. But that's where I can so understand. You just threw your child. 
with some random but people. That's where I can understand. Montclair, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> Pop Factory. People whatever. leave their kids they with babysitters. They probably make glue out of your dog, bro. People Real leave their dog. kids with babysitters. Say what? People leave their kids with babysitters. I'm sorry. White, White people oh, no, get no, that. No, 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 White people get no, 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 no. Let's anybody. go back on this babysitter okay. thing. I can't wait. I can't wait. No, 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 no. People leave their kids with babysitters. Let's go back to old podcast. Okay. Only white people leave their kids with babies. Indians, we would never leave our kids. We love our kids so much. We leave it with relatives. I got money now. I can't keep back an Indian all the time. I got to be a little white. Market. Market. I love it. I love it. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because some of you guys need some new headphones. That's a fact. Some of you listen to this right now. It's some bullshit. Maybe you even got wires still on your headphones. Fucking dorks. Nerds, right? Step it up. Get the wires away. Getting caught on stuff, snatching them right out of your ears. There's nothing more uncomfortable than that. And like, I remember you once saying a terrorist could get any information they wanted from you if they just put the wired headphones in your ear and yank, and yank them out. Whatever you want. I'll tell you all the secrets. Fort Knox, that's where all the gold is. Allegedly. Uh, <laughs> so, guys, Raycon has got your back, man. Raycon uh, has these incredibly affordable, amazing headphones. Half the price Bruh. of the standard ones, okay? Be honest. You're losing the standard ones. They're falling all over the place. They're breaking. Yep. Raycons are going to give it to you for half the price. They got up to six hours of listening, okay? This is high quality, high value, right to your fucking eardrums. This is a no-brainer. Go do it. And what you're going to do right now is you're going to get 15% off all their products for our listeners. All you got to do is go to buyraycon.com slash flagrant. That's it. You got 15% off your entire Raycon order. So feel free to grab a pair and spare. And that's 15% off at buyraycon. That's R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash flagrant. Go get that right now. Let's get back to the show. AOC was literally handing out turkeys in Ted Cruz's neighborhood, bro. And it was a brilliant so good. political move yeah. because is she doing it to kind of like grift off the situation? Sure. But everybody's okay with grifting if there are people benefiting from yes. it. For example, if you're a rich person and you give a lot of money to charity, nobody cares that you're writing it off in taxes because there are so many people that are taking advantage of that charitable donation. Yeah. So she raised millions of dollars. She's leaning into this, but she's basically digging Cruz's grave for right yeah. now. Every million it goes up, that grave gets a foot deeper. Bruh, it's, it's over for that motherfucker. Brilliant. But keep in mind, remember she said Ted Cruz, she blamed him for what happened to her. Yeah. She was like, Ted Cruz reminds me of uh, like the guy who sexually assaulted me. Do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. She said a few of the senators mm -hmm. who were inciting, she felt like were inciting the riots and then telling people to get over it. She was like, that reminds me of the guy who assaulted me or when I was younger and just telling me to get over these things. Do you guys remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I thought, I don't know the full Clarified context. Clarified, though. Yeah, well, she also, uh, she blamed Cruz and other folks for allowing her to be exposed to potentially getting murdered but then she like clapped back at him when he agreed to her tweet about the congressional uh, uh look into gamestop and all of that and she like brought it back again like oh uh i don't care that you agree with me you almost had me murdered like, right 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 so right right that was a point where like yeah Texas so this is a her. personal vendetta but this is a savvy political chick she's been savvy with, with that she a star she a fucking star, dog. She's savvy, dude. She's, she's fucking savvy. She's not dumb. She's not dumb. She knows what she's doing. And she's, it's even, not even beyond, the Ted Cruz thing is the biggest thing, but also it's a red state where they're going to be inclined to hate her. But as somebody whose parents are stuck, yo, God bless her. You're the best. You can flip people like that. Yeah. Nobody like in the Texas. Bro. Yeah. The easiest way to get people on your side is to give them money. I mean, yes. It's not even, Andrew Yang w went from nowhere, right? Like yeah. who the fuck is Andrew Yang? Right? Asian dude out of nowhere becomes a presidential candidate yep. just by saying, I want to give everybody $1,000. Yep. Literally, all he goes, I want to give every. I believe in universal basic income. People are like, I don't know what the fuck that is. You want $1,000? Well, yeah. this fucking Chinese guy's smart. This guy's <laughs> genius. I love this Chinese. Yang gang, Yang gang. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Remember? Yeah. Yang gang. Yeah. Bro, I'm Yang gang. All he, listen, do you know a single policy of his outside of, I want to give no. everybody $1,000? No, absolutely not. Uh, automation, he knows is bad. I'm with that. And he's smart. He probably knows a bunch of shit. Maybe he was a businessman. I don't know what the fuck is going on. He's running for mayor of New York. Everybody in New York is like, I think I like this guy. Not because he's walking in bodegas and grabbing fucking fruit salad. He's going to give everybody $1,000. Even if he hasn't said that, everybody in New York is like, oh yeah, the Chinaman is going to give us $1,000. We got to vote for that guy. 100%. If you give people money, they like you. Yep. Very simple. Yep. 
And this chick, AOC, is out there handing out ducats in Ted Cruz's backyard. It's unbelievable. It's actually better than turkeys. Oh, like if instead oh, of turkeys you were just handing people hundred dollar bills, don't you think they like them a I'm lot going more? To Boston Market, save eighty bucks, live a great life. Who? Yeah. What fuck? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what poor person got a big enough oven to fit a twenty pound turkey? Nobody. It's just a frozen turkey that down the next block they're trying to sell. Yeah, they're yeah. flipping turkeys. Yep, dude. Anyway, so she's a fucking savvy chick. This girl, yep. man, she's a star, and Ted Cruz is getting cucked out. King Cuck. Getting cucked out in your own state by your biggest political rival. That's so true. Oh, my God. This guy just watching her give out money, and then he's like, here, you want some shitty bottle of water? You can't even give motherfuckers a sent you. <laughs> no, <it is. laughs> That's right. He was you giving the water with the salt in it? He was giving the Publix brand. Yo. You're giving Publix <laughs> water out there, bro. So the, the, cr the, tra the crazy shit about um, AOC also, or maybe this is the thing with Ted Cruz, is like um, he's completely devoid of... Uh, Excuse me. Understanding social interaction. Mm -hmm. So he could be like uh, on the spectrum a bit. Yeah. Like he understands how to play the character of a human being. Like anytime you, you see him talking, you're like, oh, he's playing a character of a human being. Yeah. You know, true. it's like almost like a comic that like has yep. like a fake voice. You're yep. like, oh, this is a funny character you're playing, but it's not really you. Yes. Right. Um, Will Ferrell yep. is great at this. Now, so if if you look at him through that lens, he can be smart and completely devoid of any rationale as to how this could be uh, affect him negatively. Yeah. He's just looking at it like a robot. He's like, well, if I move out of my house and go to a hotel, how is that different than if I move out of my house and go to Cancun? Yeah. Like they have internet in Cancun. They have internet in my hotel here. I can't meet with people because of COVID. So what's the difference? I can get my work done in a hotel in Cancun or I can get my work done in the hotel in downtown Dallas, wherever the fuck he lives. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can see how an autistic person or a spectrum person would go through that logic and go, yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think he's a coward, but I could, fair. I'm just but if he was a like coward, that. he wouldn't go. If he was a coward, he'd be so terrified. He, cowards live in fear, right? They live in fear of public perception. They live in terror and, and fear of being actually physically harmed. He would be fearful of the physical harm. Or it could be so autistic it doesn't occur to him that part, but he's also like, I'm, or so socially stupid, but he's also like, I'm cold, I don't want to be cold, I'm not sitting here for this, I'm getting the fuck out. Yeah. Right. There's right. some coward, cowardly shit, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess what I'm trying to say. Like, you know uh, why we want him to stay? Because misery loves company. My parents are miserable, motherfucker, you miserable. Yeah. You the senator. Yeah. You miserable, dude. Fucking, oh, I'm petty, bro. Patrice said the best shit about Bush. He goes, I love Bush. And they were like, why? He goes, he goes, this was after the 9-11 yeah. shit. He goes, he goes, he goes. Cause his whole shit is if we if we die everybody dies, yeah, <laughs> and, and that's lit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If we gonna die, everybody gonna die. Yeah. So I love the misery love company. That shit is that shit is. I'm, I'm just trying to find some rationale. Okay. Um. So let's move on. What else yeah. was uh, Kim and Kanye? Okay, Kim and Kanye. Game over. Game over. Um. Thoughts. I mean, we saw it coming. I guess for a while. I think Kim. Who's who's next is the only thing I've been wondering. Is, I think it's Drake, right? It's got to be Drake. There's only one way to go. Only one way to go, and it's it's, it's such the Kardashian move, and it's such the Drake move. Because Drake, we talked about dancing on graves. Yeah. Drake will dance on your shit. He oh, don't give a fuck. Shit. Drake is a killer. Yeah, dude. Oh, that's <laughs> a great. I didn't even put that together. Like his beat with Kanye. Oh, he he wants it, bro. Yeah. He's also friends with the Kardashian. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's the neighbor. Like yeah. the no, neighbor. They were all homies. Yeah. And he's been alluding to it for a while, but now that it's Dunzo, it's the perfect move for both of them. He already alluded that he fucked her. Yeah, but I mean, you, now, he smashed. now there's no, they don't need, there's no need to elude anymore. Now you're single. Now I can just openly be with you. The J Lo style post or whatever he did, even if it's not real. Remember that post he had with J Lo where it looked like they had been fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He could do the exact same I, thing with I Kim. I forgot that one. I forgot. That. They're all snuggled up. I think they're wearing bathrobes or some shit like that. Yeah, something. It was like a uh, couple years. He, old. he came out to her residency in Vegas. And they would hang out. Like, okay. A picture like that. You're both in robes. So they know what they're doing. They're yeah. like, yo, let's shake up the internet yeah. for a day. Gotcha. You could do the same shit. And That's who's more willing to do that than Kim? And she always moves up. Yeah. And this is, I don't know about fame or any of that shit, but Drake is a mega, mega star who's seen as sane and cool and all of that shit. And like, that's the, that's the only, only chess move left. It, and it's checkmate, really. Is it weird that like, with... There's much to criticize about the Kardashians. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
But with Kim specifically and Kanye, Mm -hmm. I think she's the victim. Without a doubt. Like, like we could we could talk about all the things that the Kardashians do that are potentially disgusting. Yep. yep. But in this specific relationship, like remove Kim as uh, the person who came to fame through a sex tape and her mother essentially pimping that out and like them, you know, projecting this specific lifestyle and potentially using and cooking up this drama and destroying maybe people's lives on the way and profiting mm-hmm. off of that, right? Let's remove them from the Kardashians. Yep. Specifically, Kim Kardashian with Kanye West. Yeah. If Kanye is crazy, which I think we believe is true. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mentally ill. Mentally yeah. ill. Yeah. Uh, the, the politically correct podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is called fucking Ted Cruz a retard for 30 minutes. <laughs> but if, if Kanye is mentally ill, I know motherfuckers mentally ill. Yeah. That shit is exhausting, bro. Yeah, you have a different level of empathy for that. Hey, this guy is driving tanks in Wyoming. You got to just put up with him wanting to go drive tanks in Wyoming. Support him along the way. You bailed his broke ass out. Mm -hmm. Think about this. You marry this guy who's telling you he's a genius all the time, and he just keeps losing more and more millions. And you're looking at him like, ain't looking too genius right about now, right? Right. Finally, you get him cooked up with some power players, Mm -hmm. right? The scooters of the world. Yeah. To get the easy thing going, he becomes a billionaire. Sure. I don't know if he gets that connect and that gets that put together without Kim. I don't know if they... (sighs) It's interesting. I don't know. He had enough to bring all of those people to him before the Kardashians came around. That's wild, dog. That was disgusting. <laughs> that shit grossed me out, I, had, I felt like a Kardashian. Right I, there. <laughs> I was looking like Kendall. No, uh, where you get that out from? Fashion Nova? You did it. And I might have. I got it at Bash. What was their store back in the day? Yeah. Dash. 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 I got it at Dash. So, so I think Kim is definitely the victim. I'm surprised they lasted that long. Yeah. And, and, and we're losing victim. We're using victim loosely here. We're well, not dealing with a horrible person to be with. She's the hero. She she's dealing with a crazy human yeah. being. Yeah, all these terms are relative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I don't want to like exaggerate. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. there are women who've been fucked up. It's tough for me shit. to feel bad for any Kardashian because I don't look at them as human beings. <laughs> yeah. But if I yeah. put on the glasses of this is an actual human being with a soul, I see how she's a victim. This is the only way I look at it. If she didn't have kids, I'd be like, "You're an idiot. Like, why are you staying with this guy? Why she keep having kids though?" And she loves having kids, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a woman. That's what they do. Cute kids, too. Yeah. yeah, and they make some cute kids. So so here's the thing. Like, you love, potentially you love this guy. Yeah, she definitely has. Who's crazy, yeah. right? You stay with him. You rock with him. He's broke. Fucking your whole brand up. You could clip that off. It's not like she hasn't clipped motherfuckers before. Mm-hmm. She, he's doing crazy shit that makes your brand that look point, stupid. One second, she made the, the MAGA shit made her look crazy. Mm-hmm. She's trying to get goodwill in the black community for fucking decades. Mm-hmm. What do I have to do? I'm getting black guys out of jail. And then all of a sudden, my black husband, <laughs> who's the father of my half black kids, is walking around a fucking MAGA head. What the fuck are you doing? Mm-hmm. I push back on that. Whoa. What is it to push back on? Because every bit of controversy does help their brand. I mean, she started. Not that mag shit, she started I'm her path. Much. I'm, I'm telling you, in, uh, it, yes, they have found a way to monetize interest. I agree with what you what what you're saying right here, Akash. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're saying is, if they have eyeballs, they make money. It doesn't matter if they're good or bad. And I eyeballs. think they are keenly aware of that and do a lot of things to get eyeballs. Hundred percent. I also do think. She's been doing a lot to curry favor within the black community specifically mm-hmm. of late. Mm-hmm. Getting no. the criminal justice reform. I would just say like rebranding herself. That's why I feel worse for her because she's actually you we can see the work that she's done to This ain't legally herself. blonde, bitch. Sit your ass down. Nah, but I mean, like, she's not so focused on just like breaking the internet and shit like that. Like she's just a mom who loves her kids and who's been trying to make her marriage work. She really hasn't been doing all the fucking bullshit she used to do in the past. So that's the only reason why I feel sorry for her because she's actually tried to. Oh, I don't feel sorry. Ma- no, I feel sorry for her. I don't feel sorry. I feel sorry for her. So she, that's not what she signed up for. 
I'm also fine with leaving dogs in the cold house. To fuck. <laughs> like I, w- I would be totally okay with that if they were there. But they did live apart for a good part of the last three years. Mm. He was living in Wyoming. She's living in LA. Like they weren't even living together. So right. that's fire. That's fire. Bro. This guy's crazy. That's fire, dog. <laughs> this guy's crazy. Hey, that shit is wet. Oh, my God. I'm driving a fucking tank, Dolo. Just living the life. So, point is, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I'm looking at this situation, and I actually am like, yo, she was a ride-or-die-ass chick Word. for this fucking crazy egomaniac. Word. Who did nothing positive for if she's, if the premise is all I do is care about the brand and all I want to do is do more shit for the brand, did nothing positive for the brand. Nah, it definitely helped the brand in the beginning. You think? Kanye linking up with Kim legitimized her from just being like some athletes, bitch, persona that's like on Instagram and shit like that. Like she became high fashion after Kanye. So it boosted her brand, but then she capitalized off that and created an empire with it. So Kanye definitely helped her because we were looking. Kanye at her, did a lot of We were looking at her like Amber before. Rose. Who were her guys? Reggie Bush who was a college star, fine as a pro, nothing crazy. Miles Austin, couple good years, and then she married Chris Humphrey. Yeah, bro, that come on. Yeah, like my man is like selling houses or something. Yo, you know what's crazy is like she could have really liked them, yo. Like she could have liked that. Like this is this this how fucked up we are, right? Is we're like, yo, you didn't just gold dig and go after the most successful, famous person, you idiot. When when mm-hmm. she, if we should be looking at her going, oh shit, she actually found some guys that weren't the best, but maybe they had cool personality and they connected, and that's why she fucked with them. And we're criticizing her for that. We're we're criticizing her for what we wish every girl would do. I'm actually not like a dude's personality. I'm not, not with Chris Humphreys because of how good he is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not criticizing her. I'm making fun of them. You got you had bum dudes. That's fine. You had bum dudes. Great. You loved them. I don't. That's like how you I making fun of them. They got to fuck Kim Kardashian getting six rebounds a game. Yeah, I'm just making fun of their skill level. That's it. As a pleasant an athlete, uh-huh. but. For the brand, you're not elevated. You're not elevated marrying Chris Humphrey. You're not like, oh, shit, Chris, Kim Kardashian got Chris You're making my point. Exactly. No, so I can agree with your point. I'm just saying, even then, to agree with Alex's point, then when you get with Kanye, now now you're a different person. Yeah. You're you're talking about Kim now, but Kim, when she was with Chris Humphreys, we, like... Some people wouldn't want to fuck her. She had a sex tape out. Like, that's how, that was her claim to fame. Who would want to wipe that? A lot of people she would have had mad her. stank on her. Like nobody. Yo, there you go. It. Now you, that's a great argument. Kanye removed the sex tape stank. Yes. I'll give you that hundred percent. Empire blew up after that. He remo- so there was still the stench of the sex tape, even though the sex tape became like a popular way to become famous. Yeah. You know, we saw a lot of girls do it. There was still a stench of it, right? Yeah. And they had their TV show and there was this home family and you got to, you know, understand them and meet them and they seemed normal and they said Bible after to <laughs> promise something like that. She didn't say that before she was taking the dangle. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh but in all seriousness, she goes and gets with Kanye, and all of a sudden, he removes that stench. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that is invaluable. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if that was by design on her behalf. And I wonder if his ego was also going. A little part of him was like, you know how like a chef goes, Yo, I could turn this parsnip into a steak. Yeah. And hmm. I could sell that shit for for hundred dollars because I'm so nice at being a chef. These motherfuckers will eat a parsnip steak. Yeah. And I wonder if he was like. I could turn this slut. <laughs> I could turn this sex tape slut who fucked, you know, wide receivers that barely in the league still into the most desired woman on the planet yeah. and remove the stench of that sex tape. Have her talking to presidents. I wonder if that was his ego mm-hmm. tapping in. I think Maybe. So. I think so because he claimed to do that for Amber. And he would remember when him and uh, Kanye, uh, Kim first got together. He would yeah. dress Kim. Mm-hmm. Son, so he can, was obsessed with her yeah. for a while. Son, Kanye, he made her. That's how I knew he was mentally ill. <laughs> Yo, they go on. I mean, listen, you in love yeah. with this Kim Kardashian? Yeah. You obsessed with Kim Kardashian? Song. Writing diss songs uh, for Chris Humphrey? Well, before that was Amber. 
Now, nah, this song's with Chris Humphries is hilarious. Like, that's this song's with Chris Humphries. That's, like, <laughs> that's just lunatic behavior. You like, post his stats. You don't need to do a whole song. Yeah, you don't need no beats. Worth your shit? Day. He want the song, bro? That ill ass beat you, you know, Chris Humphries listening to that shit like, really, bro? Come on, man. I'm, I'm already me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Humphries listening to that shit like, I made it. Yeah. I made it. This uh, the greatest. Nah, he's I've like, got. you're bullying me now, bro. Yeah. You're bullying me, bro. They put me on TV for half a season and she divorced me for ratings. Yo, bro. They made him look like an asshole. Old. Yo, but Kanye takes bodies off of your belt. Yeah. Like, everybody, if you're a girl and you got a hundred bodies, right? You got a hundred dicks is what yeah, I'm basically yeah. trying to say. Mm -hmm. Kanye knocks off 90% of your dicks. If the slut march was a person, it would be Kanye West. It, here's the thing. He ends While the shame a, of a slut. Well, that's a hilarious observation. Slut march leans into being a slut. Mm -hmm. Kanye removes your slut. I don't know if he's still got the clout to do it, but at one point in time, he had enough clout to make people forget that you were a stripper, forget that you might have done some sex for money, who knows, and forget that you had a fucking sex tape out. Mm -hmm. That's clout. Yep. When your dick cleanses a bitch, <laughs> your dick cleanses bitches, bro. Yo, he, You're he, dipping them in holy water. Yeah, holy water. Jesus yeah. walks. Yo, he Real ba talk. Baptizing bitches. Baptizing these hoes, man. <laughs> Kanye is the go. Hallelujah for hoes. You so you put your dick in a girl and there's one more body. He puts his dick in girls. Pulls out bodies. Pulls out bodies. Holy shit. He's got that motor combo. Mortal Kombat Scorpion dick, right? Get now. over <laughs> here! Finish her! Wow, dude. Yeah. That is... I mean, I don't even know if Kanye knows this about himself. Yeah, he probably don't. He would have bragged about it already. <laughs> he says, I made these bitches famous. He never said, I made these bitches virgins. Oh. I made these bitches bodiless. Mm. I made these bitches slutless. He removes your slut. Uh, I hope he hears this. He got to put this in the next track. He so does. This should be fire. So. That's an amazing ability. Yo, you think single Kanye going to put out good music? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh, driving what? tanks in Wyoming. I can't wait for 808. That shit going to be fire, Ooh. bro. I don't think he's heartbroken enough. What? I don't think he's heartbroken enough. All right. And I'm, I don't. I'm worried if he don't off himself real tough. Well, if he offs himself, off himself. I don't think it will be off of. I don't think it will be off of Kim. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> he not heartbroken, but he'll off himself. Not off Maybe of Kim. He off himself. He off himself. But that's not the point. The he'll point. Just, was yeah, he'll just off himself. Like somebody will go to him and be like, "Bro, you're not that genius, bro. You just go boom, boom, bap on a fucking sound maker." <laughs> like Damn, this guy. You know what I mean? Like this guy really comparing himself uh, to fucking Elon Musk and me Jeff crazy. Bezos. And we bought this in. This is what Kanye does. We bought in. You Bangers. <laughs> That's it. And then sing shitty. Nah, stop it. Bro, no, I've no, never. Stop it. So I, don't do that. Don't we do bought that. into the Kanye genius, and that you shit would drive me Kanye. crazy. Don't do that. I, I was can working out to him yesterday. Yeah, bro. come on, son. That motherfucker got some hits. Bro. I could love your music and you I not felt, be a genius. I felt a little less slutty after working out. There we go. I did, bro. I really did. <laughs> Yo, you put Kanye on at a party, you could put Kanye on the hood. You could put Kanye on in a bougie ass party. Kanye's in and out. Kanye's in and out. You could have in and out at some fancy fuck. If you brought in and out to some fancy party in Star Island in Miami, people would lose their fucking minds, yeah. bro. They would go, we got an in and out truck at the, how'd you get this here? Mm. It's $5 hamburgers. These motherfuckers are billionaires. They will lose their minds, mm. right? Mm -hmm. In and out for whatever reason crosses all. Yep. Class boundaries. Okay, I'm with you. Keep going. In and out, you could put them at the bougie. I mean, in and out. Kanye West, you could put on a Kanye West mix at the most bougie party or the hood. Nobody's mad. White people love Gold Digger. White people love Gold Digger. Looking at their wives. <laughs> <laughs> and they sitting on the couch looking at their wives like, bitch, you done did it. <laughs> I'm proud of you, bitch. <laughs> but isn't that, isn't that true? Yeah, yeah. Poke Absolutely. holes if they're there. Absolutely. Nah, it's valid. Yeah. That's valid. Did it take Kanye and Kim getting divorced for me to realize how dope <laughs> Kanye is? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Yo, I think so. Yo, you Somebody know what it is? His name. Kanye, but you know what it is? I don't agree with the reasons why Kanye believes he's dope. I okay. Now I'm with you. Get keep going. So Kanye is like, oh my God, I'm I'm like the most amazing music. Da, 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 da. I'm Fashion. Like, fine. Oh, oh, oh. Fashion. Who cares? I don't care about those things. But 
And I've seen better clothes. I've heard better music. I, he's a great producer. I'm not going to He's incredibly influential with fashion. I don't even think he was, that. at least. Oh, no, no, you're right. I agree with you in terms of influence. I don't think he's innovative. I think he's influential. Influential, very. So he'll take some shit that exists and use his influence and then to it's get hot everybody. And he wears it. Agreed. Old fashioned. Bro, why are you digging? Why are you putting holes in a great point? I have a great point. We why was are you walking. Doing that? You why are you make, doing that? He making me walk like Jack Sparrow, bro. I gotta avoid these little landmines <laughs> in case I. <laughs> <laughs> you know how Jack Sparrow be walking like this, jumping back and forth. That's what I'm doing right now. I, but that's a very important distinction. What Akash just said. Not innovative. Influential, See, and that you. is my. That is why I give pushback whenever he refers to himself as is a, a genius. A genius because he's comparing himself to people who are innovative, not influential. But what he did with the church thing was pretty innovative. Bringing that back, capitalize back. on God. That's on. been done many times. Hold on, no, but you're saying his style of it, going to of church it. on a Sunday <laughs> and playing and music. Singing? See, they mean <laughs> what? Stop! Like he changed. Black like, people haven't been doing that for a minute. How long black people been going to church? No, he been going to that Puerto Rican ass yeah. church. Hold on. How long black people can go to church on Sunday and singing? <laughs> how long but black people? I just, I understand. No, Kanye just white made it fire. Make, he's making it pop. Usually he steals yeah, our shit. Now he's stealing pop, your man. shit. Uh, let me tell he you something. Pop. This Jewish guy wanted to go to, to Sunday service. Yeah, but you Look never been that. to a black church. Black church service slaps. I want to go to that black church That should be slapping. Well. <laughs> Kanye church service slapped less than the average AME. I'll tell you that right now. No, I'm gonna give a pushback on that one, bro. Yeah, I'm used. I was with you like, up until you said that shit. I don't like any of y'all. Be honest with you. All y'all just suck my dick. Be honest with you. I'll tell you one thing. If I suck your dick, you a hoe, bro. <laughs> God, they can't remove that dick suck, right? Yeah, ain't, nothing. <laughs> ain't nothing. Yo, can Kanye fuck a dude and then they not gay no more? Oh my Probably. God. Holy shit. Probably. Holy hey, shit. Yo. Probably ask Jeffree Star what's good. Yo, maybe that's the Jeffree Star room. Jeffree Star was like, how do I get these bodies off of me, bro? I got too many bodies. And Kanye was like, hold my tapioca soda. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you be, whatever you be drinking, bro. You know you want some new shit. Tapioca soda? It sounded hot, bro. Do that, you know what tapioca That just sounds like a Jack Johnson song, right? So I just thought he was rich, so that's what he drinking. And yeah. I didn't want to be so poor, so I'm I laughed. Like, I'm like, damn, I'm that poor tapioca soda. <laughs> tapioca now, so. soda, son. Tapioca soda, bro. Y'all yeah. don't even know about that. That comes with the watches, too? Shit, <laughs> yeah, like, Oh, yeah. I got to see that shit. Oh, shit, I got to get That's this it? back to my girl by four. She said, like, oh, right. <laughs> 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 Okay, so, so there's the discrepancy. I understand Kanye's greatness and is for none of the reasons why Kanye believes he's great. That's a mm. uh, great way of putting it. And then, That's a great way of putting it. And then I think it's almost like... Um, you understand Kanye's genius, I think, right? Because his music is great. He makes great music, but that's it. I can only give him the credit genius. for genius if it's intentional. And I don't know if what he's doing is intentional because his greatness is not what he takes pride in. Hmm. So I think that he, the things he takes pride in, I'm like, eh, about. But by acting the way he does and creating the way that he creates or influence in the way he creates, it has a monumental side effect that I think is fucking unbelievable that I don't know if he's aware of. Right. And I wonder if he was like, yeah, actually, I just do all this other marketing shit so I could really do this. I'd be like, you the motherfucker. You, you right. Go stand up there with Bezos and stand up there with Musk and mm -hmm. you got it. Yeah. You got it. You done fooled me, bro. Yeah. You got it. Right. I don't know if that's what he's saying. Mm. But maybe. It could be. I'm, I'm literally... As we're talking right now, doing a 180 on Kanye, but it's not for the reasons Kanye says. That's valid. But it's undeniable his, it's influence. Oh, he's incredibly influenced. That's what it is. It's fucking influence. And of course him and Kim created a... a uh, what is her actual... She's an influencer. She's the influencer. He is the influencer. Yeah. And both of them together created a mega church of influence. Mm-hmm. But then he started fucking up the brand. And he started fucking up the goddamn brand. Holy shit. That was the mega church of fucking influence. Whatever they wore, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Well, they, weren't they the ones that made Champion hot? Like, they just started wearing Champion, and then all of a sudden that shit is Is hot. that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is I that think right? so. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second, because uh, I got to save y'all some money. Simple as that. We got to save y'all some money. You ready for some free fucking savings? Akash, are you ready to give them free What do you know about? You know I know about Honey.com, bro. boy, bro. If there's an Indian app, it's Honey.com. Honey.com. 
bare minimum, what they're going to do is going to give you all these discount codes, all these coupon codes and save you fucking money. And we're going to give you that app for absolutely free. I don't understand how you could not do that. Uh, you have to. I used to spend like legit hours trying to find the best coupon code on this website where I'm trying to check out. Honey.com just does it for you. So whatever you need, usually there's a coupon code somewhere on the internet. Yes. And what you're basically telling me is that Honey aggregates all those codes and then delivers them right to you. Yes, finds it. Hey, click oh, the one that's the best. Oh, you need some sneakers, you need some headphones. I say 25 bucks on sneakers. Done. Done. Now, what if you could have access to this website where you save money for free? I mean, you have to do it. That's a no fucking brainer, isn't it? It is a no fucking brainer. Okay, well, let me tell you guys something. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free, mm. free to save money. They're paying you, essentially. And, Look at it like that. And it installs in a few seconds. few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash flagrant. That's joinhoney.com slash flagrant. And once again, it's going to find you all the discounts for stuff you're buying on the internet. Guess where you're buying all your shit right now? You're damn sure not in internet. store. Why would you not save the money? It's free. Go save the money. Go support the podcast. Let's get back to the show. Anything before we move on? I think you... I had a point. Um, so you know how you guys said that if Drake gets with Kim, that would kill Kanye? Mm. I think what would kill him even more is if Beyonce and Jay-Z become cool with Kanye. I mean, become cool with the Kardashians. Okay, go. Because he has, for the last decade, been trying to get back in Jay-Z's good graces. And then, yeah. like it kills him that they don't fuck with him at all. And um, Beyonce doesn't like Kim. That's why they didn't go to the wedding. That's kind of what created their little beef to begin with. Yes. And so now... I've been filled in on this. It's <laughs> because Kim is cool with um, Rachel Roy. And that's the guy that oh. Jay-Z cheated with. Girl, girl, so, girl. There, yeah, the girl, girl that Jay-Z cheated with. I didn't with. know. I didn't so, hear that part. I'm yeah, sorry. I'm not bro, in the gay I, circle. I, like hey, bro. Oh, we got the tea in the gay circle. <laughs> like, I mean, we got the tea. Got the, we got the dick. <laughs> we got the cum. We got it all. <laughs> we sipping on all of it. What do you want? But yeah. yeah, so that that would kill him. I hope that doesn't happen. Because no, but that I don't would think, kill Kanye. I don't think Beyonce would do that. I actually She's hope never that happens. Fuck with Kim. I think Kanye will be back cool with Jay again. Oh, now that they... Yeah, the reason they don't hang out is because my wife don't like your wife. Now you divorced. We good. Yeah, but Kanye has done too many things to piss Jay off and shit like that. But Jay, I think, also knows how good it would look if he took Kanye back in this moment. Mm. When Kanye's a broken man. And Jay is the capitalist. Yeah. Yo, Jay's a Jay's genius, a genius though. That's a genius. genius. That's a genius. You know why I appreciate Jay is because like he's so like transparent with his fraudulence. Yes. That like you're like, all right, I get it. Like he'd be like, we got, what do you mean? He'd be like, yo, we gotta, we gotta support our own. You know what I mean? Like, I got a product, it's black owned. We gotta support our own until it's successful enough for me to sell it to some white motherfuckers that be oppressing us. Like, literally, he's like, why are you buying that other champagne, right? Mm -hmm. They look down on us. And just recently, he sold a 50% stake of Ace of Spades to Moe and mm -hmm. uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Moet Hennessy. Yeah. Moet Hennessy, right? So it's just hilarious. Like, he's a G like when he was trying to sell off title. Yeah. Yo, this is our shit yeah. that I'm trying to sell over here <laughs> to Samsung, whoever the fuck yeah. was yeah. he was trying to sell it to. I but no. I just respect it because I know what he's doing. He's yeah. a capitalist through he's, and through. He's, a he's never pretended to be anything but a capitalist. Boom. Exactly. And now I understand he's fraudulent. But you could also make an argument and be like, yeah, but he's still bailing motherfuckers out of jail for these marches yeah. when they get arrested. Like, he's still putting his money where his mouth is. Yeah. But Jay-Z will always do the financial thing. Yes. And he hasn't claimed, he hasn't caught out and be like, like, he'll do that shit where he bails out the people, but he doesn't announce it. Like, I'm an activist. I'm yeah. a great guy. Yep. Yeah. He does that on the low. That's the shit he wants to do that he feels comfortable doing. And then he goes out and gets his money. At whatever cost. He had that one line in Moment of Clarity addressing it where he basically said, like, um, I can't get back to the poor if I'm one of them. So I, I get rich and get back to me. That Get back to them. That's the That's win. a win-win. So, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So that's his move. He announced yeah, that. Yeah. This is, this is my Actually, I, I don't like that line. Why not? Because it makes it... He had one line addressing what he does. But yeah. then it's like... But it makes it seem like that's his intention is to give back to the poor. Well, it's not his intention. His intention is to be a capitalist, which is so, great. Yeah, but... But the win-win means we both, be, we both yeah. win. Win win. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I, I, okay. Okay. I guess what I'm saying is I didn't like the positioning as if his sole purpose of getting money right. was to give back to the poor because that's not the sole purpose. But he is saying if I get money, I'm also going to be able to give back 
So motherfuckers are going to be yeah. and that's, a little that's, bit better off. That's basically who he's been this whole time. I and get I, rich. I get I back a little it. bit. You got it. But still win-win. I wonder if we're the minority. And I wonder if the people listening to this podcast also fit into that, where it's like, we prefer the overt honesty. Yes. Absolutely. Or if, if it isn't the overt honesty, we, we prefer you not to be publicly fraudulent. Yes. So even if you say nothing... And we just judge you by your actions. I could be like, all right, you leaving your cards on the table. Yeah. You're going, hey, buy this thing because it's for us. But then you're selling it. You're like, oh, okay, I see. He's a businessman. He's trying to get his money. I right, do your thing. Yeah. Right? The people who go, I'm an activist and we need to stand up and we need to do all these other things. The second they, the second they divert even the slightest bit from that character, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, you phony. Yeah. yeah. You fucking phony. You lied to me. Whereas if you just leave your cards on the table, yeah. we get to decide who you are. Hey, we the number one ain't shit motherfuckers in the world. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, we ain't shit. Yeah. We sell out. We yeah. sold out. So we got fake money on the podcast. Yeah. We yeah. love money so much, we got the fake one. 100%. <laughs> I mean, we would have the real one, but it's expensive to have the real one. <laughs> <laughs> we need to be more capitalist. Yeah, it's so, it's so counterintuitive, isn't it? That like the brutal honesty is actually more supportive. Like, this kind of comes off of the Kardashian shit a little bit, and you were you were tapping into this when you were talking about, like, that. they just want eyeballs. They can monetize it. They can monetize it, but there are going to be people, a certain percentage of the people that they are monetizing or whose eyeballs they have that are praying for the downfall, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And that's what happens when you brag without context or skill. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like we can root for the people who have things, right? Like, I don't ever not root for Lil Duval. The guy's on islands yeah. in the Bahamas and flying planes, but I root for him, mm-hmm. right? I, I don't hope for his downfall in the yep. least. I want him to succeed. Right. But there are also people like maybe the Takashi 6ix9ines and these types of people who, like, you, there are people who want him to get. Probably even killed mm-hmm. for what he's saying. Mm-hmm. They want him to get beat up. They want to whatever. Regardless, our eyeballs can't stay away from it. Yeah, we're drawn to the fancy things. We're drawn to the interesting things. Yeah. What is the difference between a guy like Lil Duval and a guy like Takashi or like or, or the Kardashians, where you're drawn to them? The girls watch them. The girls buy what they promote. Mm-hmm. Yet still, almost every girl is happy to see them fail. Mm. I don't know. Mm. I'll give you an example. Kendall Jenner brings out the vod, the uh, tequila brand, yeah. 818, right? And she's totally fake in the way that, that she promotes it. I, I put this tequila brand through all 60 different competitions for tequila and all this other stuff. And then people do some research. And she's like, I've been developing this tequila for over three years. People do a little research and like apparently it takes seven years to develop tequila, <laughs> right? <laughs> apparently her tequila is made at this factory that... 60 other tequilas are made at. Mm. So they just went, found a distributor, put their name on it, and went out. The reason people are upset at her is because she put herself in a position to fail. Yeah. Right? Uh, sorry, that's not the reason they're upset. But she she lied. Yeah. And people were, couldn't wait to take her down. Yeah. Why could they not wait? Do they, is it because they don't believe that her fame is justified? No, I think like you said, it's because we hate the fraudulence. If she would have just said, hey, guys, they're paying me to put my face on a tequila, we would have respect that way more. Son, I really <laughs> think it's a terrifying proposition, right? You've, you've put all this money into a brand or maybe they haven't put money, but like you put all this time or whatever. It's a terrifying proposition, to be honest. It's absolutely terrifying for a lot of people, right? It's, it's terrifying for me. It's terrifying for most of us. That's actually, we, it's, we'll get to it later, but that's a great segue into why Patrice was amazing. Yep. Honestly, but it all costs. It costs, to be it honest. It costs, to be honest, but it provides. In the end. I think in the immediate. We'll talk about Patrice's honesty when we get to get that. There. But let's Two just, let's, let's this, talk this about this. Yeah. So it's like Cardi, for example. Yep. She was super honest, takes so much criticism and pushback and makes her life more difficult, but... Her rise to fame was like immediate, uh, super fast. I think um, Jay Z has learned to shut up. Cardi is a perfect example because people were so happy for her success. Yeah, 
as long as she was that honest Cardi. Yeah. Come out with video, bitch, I don't care. I chipped my nail. I'm not going to pay for a whole new fucking set of nails. I just paid $200 for this shit. I can't do that shit. If you broke my nail, da, 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 like I walk around with a broken ass nail. And then girls were like, oh my God, I love her. She walks around with broken nails. It's the coolest yeah. thing, whatever. Yeah. And I think the when Cardi started to experience pushback is when she started to do th- go the fraudulent. She, yeah, when she started to get political. She started to get intrigued. political. Even if she does truly care about these issues, it seemed as if she was using her persona to push an agenda exactly. instead of just honestly reacting to her environment. Yeah. Right. It it wasn't like she was out there like, man, I don't really fuck with Bernie's tax plan because I'm trying to save money, which she probably is trying to save money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It seemed like she was just riding the wave of whatever that was. Yeah. And that's when I think that you experience that pushback, right? It's like when we know that there's a disconnect, there's some fraudulence there. Why is it that when people get to that level, they can't continue to ride the honesty that got them there? Or is honesty too costly at a certain level? It is costly to those others at that level. Advertisers don't want a lot. Advertising is all not honesty. It's all Mm. dishonest, essentially. I remember somebody brought up the slogan back in the day, choosy moms choose Jif. Jif peanut butter sucks. But that slogan literally says, if you don't get Jif peanut butter, you're a bad mom. (laughs) (laughs) That's the fucking slogan. Yeah. All advertising is, is we're trying to lie to you to get you to get this product. And if we're associated with motherfuckers who are too honest, that's dangerous. Look at at all the pushback LeBron got. For? Like when he didn't do anything with China. People are coming at him because, like, hey, what are, you're Mr. Socially Conscious, let's be pro-black. And now when these people are suffering over there, you're for, like, you have nothing to say. You don't want to affect your pocket. And we looked at that shit as fraudulent, it's fake, like, you're pussy for doing it. Mm. Because he's just so big that any little thing he says or doesn't even say can hurt his Because pocket. he's so, um, ah, this is interesting. He's, he's so curated. vocal. Yeah. But he is so vocal so we expected that same level yep. right. when it came to this other issue that was similar in nature to mm. the issues he's so vocal about. Right. And it looked as if he chose his pockets over being yes. vocal. So here's a question. Do we often conflate honesty and being critical of something that could hurt you for being critical of it? Say that again. So like... Uh, the, the the example that I can think of right now, and for whatever reason it worked out, but is like, I'm sure, at least in the comedy community, the average person probably couldn't give a fuck. But when I was like, yo, Netflix is done. Mm-hmm. At a time where everybody was trying to get a Netflix special, mm-hmm. I'm sure there are people in the comedy community that are like, yo, he's truthful. He don't give a fuck. He'll say whatever. Because what I was saying was costly Yeah. Okay. to me. Yeah. So anytime you say something that can cost you money, there's immediate truth that's attached to it from the from the perceiver. Anything you do, and it clearly wasn't honest because motherfucker got a Netflix mm-hmm. special. Gang, 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 gang. <laughs> but <laughs> it was honest in the moment. I was I was wrong, but it was what I honestly felt in the moment. But um, Shit. like for example, when Hell just froze over. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but Kanye, for example, when he was like, uh, George Bush don't care about black people. Yeah, that's one of the greatest moments. In, Great in, moment. In media history. Even when he went up and did the whole, um, what's the blonde Taylor. chick's name? Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift shit, right? Bitch. It was like, we trusted that so much because what he did could have cost him. We thought like, yo, this doesn't benefit him in any way. Yeah. I trust this man. He keeps doing things because they are the quote unquote right things to do. I don't know if it's right to do that to Taylor Swift or not, but like, or if it's even right to say about George Bush or not, it's a weird indictment. I don't know if you can prove, right? Yeah. But there's an immediate trust this put. It's like the waiter telling you one of the menu items is trash. Yeah. Like you ever, you ever ask the waiter, yeah. like, right? Yo. You're like, yo, like, uh, is there anything? What about the lasagna? And the waiter does that shit like, yo, I'll be honest with you, like, the lasagna is trying to garbage. Like, I wouldn't fuck with lasagna. After the waiter says that to you, I'm like, I'll trust this man with my child. <laughs> I'll trust this man with my dog. I, I'll leave my dog. When I go to Cancun, I'm leaving my dog with the waiter that told me the lasagna is trash. You don't care it's about your <laughs> dog that much. So I can't naked. wait to leave my dog this weekend. I'm going to take a picture as I drive away in the three series. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but, but you know what I mean? It's like, um, I, I feel like oftentimes we could conflate those two things. Mm-hmm. You know? 
Like there might be people that are just saying outlandish shit for attention purposes, not because they believe in it. Mm -hmm. Like is what Takashi 69 is doing right now a perfect example of that? He's calling out all these people and it's wildly entertaining. He's calling yeah, out all these gangsters. I don't respect it because it's not, to your point, it doesn't cost you anything. It earns you something. This is your ticket mm -hmm. to fame or money or whatever. This is an end for you. I'm just going to draw all the eyeballs, negative or positive attention. To your point, that's why I don't respect the Kardashians. Positive or negative, it all benefits them. So whenever you do shit for attention or say something wild or do something wild, it's like, that's what you do. But the initial idea with Takashi saying this, initially... There was truth there, we thought, right? We're like, oh, shit, this guy is willing to call out all these other gangsters? Some people start to believe, like, yo, this guy might be a super thug. Like, it's the real, you calling out the crazy, you calling out the Chicago motherfuckers? Like, yo, this guy's crazy. He's, he's really about it. He's really truthful. And then the second time around as, he, as he's doing it, it still garners attention, but you see the fraudulence because you're like, oh, he's just using... Yeah, I'm using that. Did you see his most recent thing he did? Wild boy. So, so he has the little interaction with Meek. Meek, yeah. And Corny. then he takes the clip, puts it in a video, inserts it in his music. Yeah, video like, it's great. Out, it's like, a brilliant move. It's like, wildly corny. But I don't fuck with him, but that was a, Yo, that you, was a good move. You didn't see what he did the the Facetime live with the yeah. Chicago dudes? Yeah. That shit was crazy. I didn't know the Chicago. He's dude. he's on Facetime live with all the Chicago goons, like one after another, and he's just like, "Yo, don't talk tough because." Everybody kills your people, and they don't end up getting killed. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yo, son. Oh, and he said, rest in piss. Oh, my God. He's going to get killed. Son, he's killed. he's really asking to be killed. Yeah. I don't know why he's... <laughs> but is he taking advantage of, like, this natural, yes. like, human reaction? Yes. And I guess that's what I'm trying and to say. there's genius to that. 100% genius. He's, like, hacked the system. Yeah. Right? Like, and we'll get... This is a cool... Uh, uh, Let's segue into into Patrice, but like there is the ability to like garner attention in that way. I just I just find that there is a distinction between like following somebody and like rooting for them and following someone and like hoping for their downfall. And I'm curious if that's simply a function of success. Like you like to ride it on the way up, and the second it's up and things are doing well for that person that you were rooting for, you're like, man, fuck them. I'm not there. Mm -hmm. And then who or who are the people that because if you look at even Lil Duval, there are people actively getting his Instagrams canceled. Mm -hmm. Every time it comes back, they get canceled. There are people that are fucking hating on him. Mm -hmm. What is that? What is the distinction? What is the turning point? Where's the bell curve? I think with certain support? people like different things on that point. For Takashi, for me, maybe I'm just old, but from the beginning, I was like, oh, this kid just wants attention. He's fucking entertaining and it's wild yeah. and it's scary. Yeah. And I'm watching, but I don't. It's fraudulent to me. He just wants yeah. attention. Awesome. Ultimate addiction. To attention. Yes. Yeah. That's what They're I want to risk his initially. life. Like heroin motherfuckers are willing to risk their life to yeah. get that next shot. Yeah. He's literally willing to risk his I mean, life. Now I'm like legit kind of starting to feel, and this is the oldest thing I'm ever say, but I like feel bad for the kid now. Like, yeah, oh, you're yeah, that yeah, addicted yeah, to this? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, need yeah. to risk your life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's actually a different, I remember when I was in college, I asked a couple of friends, would you rather be a good person, but everybody thinks you're not, or be a piece of shit and everybody thinks you're a good person? For me, I don't care. Everybody can think I'm a piece of shit. If I know I'm a good person, I'm good with that. The majority of people I asked was like six or seven people. They were like, oh, I'd rather be the piece of shit that everybody thinks is a good person. There is a different wiring in people, I think. I think there's two types. Ones that are okay with the fraudulence and they like it. I want you to be, I like what you present. I'm good with it, generally speaking. And others are like, nah, generally speaking, I don't care if you're fake. You're fuck you if you're fake. I want honesty, even if I don't like it. Mm. I think there are people are wired differently. I don't know what the percentages are, but generally speaking, I think those are just two different wirings that people have. Man, it's a hundred percent true. It's like dealing with dealing with that feeling. Like I felt that after the special. Like it was the first time that I put out content that I was getting all this like praise and accolades for mm -hmm. that I wasn't solely responsible for the creation of the content yeah so i felt a little bit of like an imposter syndrome feeling yeah. i was like i didn't do this alone right but i'm being treated as if i did because right. i'm the one who said it right and i tried to be as vocal as possible on the podcast and that stuff that this was a group project but like when i'm doing stand-up and i think of a joke if it's in the moment with somebody mm -hmm. or if i'm thinking of these bits like that's me so i feel it's earned the yeah. adulation i get from that yeah you know but like if somebody was like Yo, Schultz, that was absolutely genius what you said. 
Like my gut reaction was like, well, you know, it was all of us. We put this thing yeah. together, you know, yeah. because my body vomits yeah. the idea of um, uh, like an unearned accolade. You feel like a phony. You feel you like a fraud. You feel like an yeah. imposter. Imposter syndrome. Like and, you said. And I, I was like, I was, I was battling with it. And I was like, why do I? It's like, I'm, I'm so happy that I'm getting this stuff and everything. But there's also part of me that's like, it felt undeserved. Mm -hmm. mm. And... I don't know. I don't even know why I'm, I'm I don't know if this is totally tied to what we're talking I think about we right now. tied in with like, that's your wiring. My wiring is similar. Yeah. I walk around thinking like, oh, I don't, mm -hmm. you know, this imposter, this I'm phony, this, yeah, and that's yeah. maybe why almost certainly why I hate fraudulence and other people. But I think there's just two types of people and we tend to click because we all prefer authenticity, even if we don't like it. Yeah. And there's other people that are super phony with each other. And you're like, yo, that's fucking gross. How are y'all even friends? Mm -hmm. They might just be wired like that. Like, mm -hmm. no, nah, I'm cool with the phony. I want you to be phony. Like <laughs> it's even on the podcast. Like you even like if somebody even says something funny in our everyday. Yeah. We'll all reference that person. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's how valuable funny is to us. Yeah. That, and authenticity. I don't want credit for something that's not mine. Right. So if something funny is said, I have to say somebody's name that none of the half million people that are listening to no, this I, right now know. Yes. Yeah, Fred said, and you're like, who the fuck is Fred? Yeah. Like I could easily, I'm sure most radio hosts will just say the thing. Yep. Right? But if I say it and then people are like, yo, it's hilarious. What? Like how often do some people, the other day someone tweeted like, uh, Andrew said uh, Florida, yes. what is it? Uh, Hong Kong is the is the Florida of China or something like that. Yeah. And I was like, nah, I think it was Akash. Oh, wheels for president. Roll oh, for yeah. president. Rolling yeah. for president. I was like, nah, Akash. I had to correct Twitter. Yeah, and he publicly did it, which I appreciated. Yeah. But the but guy privately yeah. messaged me. Mm. Yeah. But I had to, I had to correct. And I, what, maybe that is a function of us knowing that in this business, the only thing that we have is our ideas. Yes. And when we get credit for someone else's ideas, we know what it would feel like if someone else got credit for yeah. ours. Right. So we feel like it's super important. That's our currency. Yes. We can't pay bills with that shit. All we have is IP. All we have is our IP, but we can't do nothing with it. It's worse than Bitcoin. Yeah. It's Doge. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yep. It's Doge. It really is. So... We have to at least publicly, like me posting that publicly is not for Twitter. Yeah. It's for you. Yeah. Because I feel like you might have seen this tweet and then you could be <laughs> going, ah, oh, fuck, man. That guy thought yeah, that yeah, yeah. Schultz said that thing that I said that was funny. I don't know if what I'm saying is relatable to anybody listening right now. And if we wasted your fucking time, my bad. But like, it is a real thing that you think about. Yeah. yeah it's, and it's good that you do that because I see some comments where like, people accuse other podcasters of like, oh, he, they got that from Reddit or they got that from Twitter and shit like that. So it, They thought I got something from Reddit once. Yeah, so that happened. So it's good if you get in the practice of always calling it out. So then it's like you have a lot more credibility that you don't do that. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, you I just... Good that you did that's that. how you just know motherfuckers don't listen to the podcast. Because yeah. like, if you listen to it, like we probably take... It, we probably have taken so much, wasted so much of everybody's time saying citing sources citing uh, for we do, joe for a dick joke you be doing bibliographies and our yeah. shit like, it's just fucking wild all right guys we're gonna take a break for a second and save y'all ass more money that's all we're doing man it's crazy we've saved you guys thousands of dollars this very episode god bless you god bless us and god bless policy genius mm. okay this is what policy genius is going to do they're essentially going to bundle your insurances to bring that premium down. Home insurance, auto insurance, they're putting them all together, making sure you have the best possible policy so you can save the most fucking money. That sounds like a no-brainer, right? I think that they're saying right now the average person can save up to $1,055 per year by reshopping their insurance. Is that correct, Akash? Yeah, just if you have to have insurance, just shop for the cheapest. And they compared 30 companies. Progressive, I think, compared three. That's Bro, 10 times as many. I mean, this is a no-brainer. When you go to buy a flight, you're not going to Delta's website. You go to Expedia. You go Kayak, to Kayak, baby. You look at all the different airlines, mm -hmm. and then you choose the one that best suits your needs. Yep. You should do the exact same thing with insurance. And where are you going to do that? You're not going to do it at Kayak. You're not going to do it on fucking Expedia. You're going to do that at Policy Genius. Yep. Right? They're so, policy geniuses. They are absolute policy fucking genius, okay? 
Um, the service that they have is unmatched. Okay. They have a five star rating across 1600 reviews on Trustpilot and Google five stars. That means people like what they're doing. Okay. The policy genius team will look at the ways that they can maximize your savings, including bundling your home and auto policies. If policy genius finds a rate, okay, that is better than what you're paying now, they'll switch it over for you for free, <laughs> free, save money for free. This is an absolute genius, okay, idea, absolute genius idea. Now, if you're worried it marches around the corner and you've barely gotten anything done, take a deep breath right now. Policy Genius will help you make the most out of this short month in minutes. Just reshop your homes and auto insurance, and then you can save up to $1,055. Head to policygenius.com to get started right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Now let's get back to the show. Uh, all right, so let's talk about the greatest comedian that ever lived. Um, Patrice O'Neill had a documentary. I hope Man. a lot of you guys had the opportunity to see it. It was, Fuck. uh, it was brilliant. All things comedy put together. Unfortunately, it was on comedy central and, um, that's not all things comedy's fault. I actually reached out to them and I reached out to Netflix and I go, what the fuck were you guys thinking? Not putting this Patrice O'Neill documentary on Netflix. Yeah. Why the fuck wouldn't you guys do this? Yeah. And, uh, what, my guy over at Netflix, what Robbie told me was, he goes, that thing was sold four years ago. Robbie's the biggest fan of the world mm. of, uh, of Patrice. Yeah. And I watched this thing, and I, the reason why we're talking about this later in the podcast, by the way, is because I assume most of you haven't watched it because it's on Comedy Central. Yeah. And even if you did watch the first area on Comedy Central, you missed like 14 minutes because they were trying to fit in in a fucking thing. If you got spot. YouTube TV, it's on demand, and it's an hour and a half, which I assume is the full. Yes. Yeah, hour and a half. Commercials up top for like a minute and a half, and then it's just straight. Go. Go. Watch it. It is profound. It is inspiring. Inspiring. It is heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Heartbreakingly sad. And I got emotional by the end. I almost cried. I cried. I cried. (sighs) You've heard us talk about Patrice O'Neill on the podcast a lot. Patrice O'Neill is, in my opinion, the greatest comic to ever live. He's also my last comedic inspiration. I've not been inspired comedically since him. That's not to say that there aren't great comics and there aren't people who have done things that are very funny, but I have yet to see somebody do comedy that I thought was a better version of what Patrice did. Mm -hmm. Patrice was comedy perfected in the way that I view comedy. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't a perfect man in the terms of the way like he treated people and that kind of stuff. Like he really fucking pissed a lot of people off. He was very self-sabotaging with his career. Yeah. And Keith Robinson is a comic who's the fucking kingmaker. We have to have another conversation another time about God bless Keith. how many people you guys all know just because of Keith Robinson. Yeah. Just as maybe a lot, but the reason Keith Robinson has played a major role in so many of the most successful comedians in history in of our time yeah. Can you and tell people who keith robinson is? keith robinson is, is a brilliant comic uh he has a special also in comedy central so maybe you haven't seen it it's, yeah. called, it's called back of the bus back of the bus back of the bus funny is what he's referring to and if you ever rode the school bus to school you know that that's yeah. where the jokes went down in the yeah. back of the bus right yeah. and um and thank keith, god you clarified that because i didn't realize yeah. the other connotation in back of the bus uh, yeah. for a black comic. Yeah. 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 he's old not that old yeah. <laughs> but uh it's a type of funny that he is referring to, right? This is what I think that we exemplify on the show. Like some people might call it the barbershop or the back of the bus, but yeah. that's where, you know, you were giving out the dozens in the back yeah. of the bus. Everybody was getting, you know, their, their balls busted, if you will. Mm-hmm. And, um, but he has had so many people. He's, he brought Kevin Hart to New York and mm-hmm. you know, he played, he was instrumental in having Patrice come down. And, and he, he used to like, drive like, Kev to, from yeah. Philly to New York, like multiple times. Yeah. He's a fucking God. Like yeah. that guy made everybody. Yeah. So he's, he's played this amazing role and he's kind of like maybe lost in the casual comedy fans, you yeah. know, understanding of comedy he's, history. Yeah. But um, anyway, so Patrice, he was the last, I think uh, I was saying last comedic inspiration in terms of like what he did with comedy. And how he did comedy and he was comedy to me you know i um i've i've tons of respect for the different types of comedy right but the type of comedy that i've always tried to live up to which is patrice o'neill's style of comedy um initially i got into comedy through it was deaf comedy jam and then chris rock was the guy who really started like getting my mind working on what comedy was um, then obviously Chappelle as yeah. well, you know, but Chris Rock, I was more part of that tree. And then I saw Patrice and 
that's who I, I was like, oh, this is it. This is the final version. Yeah. There's nothing beyond this. And I've yet to see anything beyond this. Mm -hmm. And he did comedy from feeling what you feel is doesn't matter if it is right or wrong it is true mm -hmm. it, it, you ever get an argument with your girl and she's like saying shit that's absolutely ridiculous but she felt it mm -hmm. you can't tell her yeah. she ain't feel it mm -hmm. yeah right when you feel something and you're talking about something through feeling mm -hmm. you can be wrong yeah Matter of fact, the funniest yeah. observations of your feelings are things that are incredibly wrong. Yeah. They're horrible. Yes. Right? But they're funny yes. and they're relatable. And in my opinion, if you want to be one of the great, great, greats, you can't be a straight joke slinger. Mm -hmm. Patrice used his clever. He was very clever. But oftentimes, clever is... A crutch yeah being able to say the clever thing and then you get like an applause break because there's this like uh, a visceral not even visceral it's like a, almost like a human reaction to go oh you tricked me yeah. bravo while it's clever it doesn't necessarily penetrate mm -hmm. patrice o'neill was a brilliantly clever guy but his jokes were all off of feeling mm -hmm. and the punchlines were often not clever but incredibly relatable or visceral feelings. Right. He has this one thing where he's talking about how he feels bad for side chicks. Yeah. Right? He goes, nobody cares about side chicks, right? I mean, think about side chick. I go over her house, 1 a.m., fuck her, drink her last Snapple, then leave. Yeah. <laughs> drink her last Snapple? Mm -hmm. We all are thinking the same thing. White fridge, completely empty. You open it up, and there's a Snapple on the top, graded, metal graded thing, right? Mm -hmm. How the fuck did we all have the same visual, mm. Right? He, he came from such a real place with comedy that sometimes he's not even, he's not even saying the cleverest punchline to get you to clap. You're clapping because you just got this image, mm -hmm. right, that is painted so clear that we're all thinking in the same time. Right. Right? There's another joke. I remember we were watching his special live, Elephant in the Room, where he was just talking about like uh, taking the... Like a girls always complain about what's in the food or he something. He said something like, ladies, men are just cooler. We're just cool. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. ever get the wrong order with your girl? She gets the wrong order. They do get her order wrong and she freaks out. They put and onions on it. She, and they freaking out and then he uses the term, wretched onions. <laughs> <laughs> and she, he just does this whole meltdown of yeah, a girl. Yeah. And he goes, men, just, you see that? Hey, hey, you see that? Huh. Yeah, that is. He, and he takes the, the onion and he puts it on the ground, yeah. right? He goes, just right there, on the ground. He's just leaving it on the ground, <laughs> right? Like, but like this visceral, there's nothing clever about it yeah, per se, but it is comedy. And I'm, I'm not trying to knock clever, but it is a brilliant tool that he also used. He had tons of little clever switches and stuff in his comedy, but his comedy always came from feeling. Mm. There's a lot of guys who do comedy and they're just like, Uber, what's the funniest joke about Uber? I don't care if I don't feel that way about Uber. What is the funniest misdirect about it? Yeah. And it's my least favorite form of comedy. Yeah. Because it's devoid of, in my opinion, is devoid of the visceral reaction that comedy creates. Yeah. Instead of gamifying it and like tricking you into laughing at it, I'm going to penetrate you in a way yeah. that is going to stay inside. I mean, this is very sexual. Everything all right, Al? Yeah. But, uh, but I'm going to... I'm, the joke is going to penetrate you in a way that's just going to stick with you. Yeah, and you feel it. I remember you saying early on, somebody was like crushing on stage, but it was like, whatever, it was cute comedy or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then you were like, I honestly believe the laughs are different when you're doing like what we do. It's different. And you can feel it when you really hit on some shit that's deep down a feeling that people have, you feel the difference in the laugh. They react to you different even after the show. The reaction is like you just spoke to someone's soul. Yeah. And... um it's just, yeah. I had an experience. So uh, last week I mentioned, like, I don't think I've seen much of Patrice. I just saw, like, clips on YouTube yeah. prior to that. And I knew that the doc was coming out. So I was like, you know what? Let me make sure to either watch or listen to some of the stand-up. So I downloaded uh, Mr. P. Yeah. And, fucking fantastic. Oh, my God. I've never laughed that hard on a flight. Mm. You know my laugh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You can hear me yeah, yeah. over the yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. loud-ass plane. Like, I was 
dying. So he's, that shit was hilarious. It's so yeah, good. Yeah, I, yeah. I listened to that the day Tolu came out. or whatever. Bro. Tolu, yeah. the African guy yeah. in the yeah. audience. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. I look like the most wobbable person. Back when I lived in Brooklyn, listening to that CD, just walking down the street, fucking cackling, laughing, yeah. bent over. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I look like they're such a bitch. So, but like, you can't help it's it. It's fucking hilarious. It's Where did you imagine him doing that show? In your head. Where is he performing it? In your head. In my head, it's really small. It's a very small room because you can hear. I know the exact that room that it's not, but oh, really? in my head, I have a different room. Same. I don't. It, DC Improv, I assume. Uh, is it DC Improv? Where do you imagine? It's DC. It says DC. Yeah. But I imagine like. Uh, just like. Oh, I see. I was going to say an improv. That's my yes. home club. Maybe yeah. you imagine your home club or the, the club like when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would go to the fucking uh, Dallas Improv. Yeah. Uh, I, I imagine like the small room in the cellar. Like. Yeah, yeah. Because you can just one, hear everyone, yeah. and it's like. The laughs are fucking easy. That's what Patrice Rob did. And there's he'll, nothing like Patrice live. There's something we saw. We saw him together, right? Yeah. We saw him together at Comics Comedy Club, and it was like revolutionary for me because it was the first person I felt like was. I don't know. I felt like was doing comedy in the way that like I I related to the world and I tried to talk about the world, and, and, and I just I just love the fact that he was so fine being wrong, but he was okay with it being wrong. He knew he was being wrong. Yeah. But it was how he felt. Each joke is how I feel. Yeah. Right? Like, he was talking about, like, oh, God, what was he saying? Like, about diabetes or some shit about that. Yeah. And then he was walking down the aisle. He's just walking down the aisle in a grocery store, and he saw these uh, double-stuffed uh, vanilla Oreos. Yeah. And I'm looking at these cookies like, who needs a foot? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? but like so, bro it, there's not it's not necessarily clever it's not like misdirecting it is a little bit of a misdirection right but it's not but it's it's not tada it is a fucking visceral feeling he he is not afraid of what he feels so many people doing comedy they're doing comedy based on what they think the audience will feel are okay is okay yeah and I first of all, I never was down with that, and I admired how much he was willing to go up there and say how he fucking felt. Mm -hmm. And regardless of the reaction, a lot of times it didn't do well for him. Yeah. Motherfucker would bomb, piss people off, people walk out the show. But it was what he felt. Yeah. And if you're saying what you feel and you bomb, it I promise you, it's so much better. When you fucking lie up there, and there's been jokes that I fucking I, I was up there and I lied. I was like, oh, this will probably be the funny joke, or this will get a reaction. And when those jokes bomb, dude. You feel like a fucking failure. Mm. Yeah. I tap dance for you and you guys didn't like it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ugh. yeah those are yeah. Ugh. Yeah, those are the, yeah, those are the brutal ones. Ugh. Bombs are never fun. Those are the worst bombs. I it's, can handle a bomb if I know I'm Because I feel like I sold honest. out. It's like actually what he talked about yeah, yeah. when he tried to tap dance for the industry and then didn't get where he wanted to go. Yeah. It's just on a much larger scale for him. But on, in a show, you're like, yo, I, I sold out and you still don't like me? Fuck you. Fuck me. Nothing worse. I hate myself more than I hate you. Fuck Nothing everyone. Worse. I mean, when you bomb, but like you're tapped into your feelings, yeah. you can understand their reaction. Yeah. 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 I know what I'm saying is fucked up. Yeah. I know that you guys are reacting this way because it's hard to say this publicly. Yeah. I got to get better at getting you guys comfortable enough to say it. Yeah. Where you guys don't react like this, but this is how I feel and you fucking know it. Mm -hmm. And you feel this way too. Yeah. And I will still sometimes bail out of that earlier than I want to. I'm actually proud of myself if I do a Patrice thing and the whole thing is like that. And if you can win them at the end, it's the greatest. Mm. It's the fucking greatest one. It's like, I know you're not into it. I'm staying here. And I'm going to get you on board. And they appreciate that. An audience appreciates it. Yeah. It's the same thing about what we were saying before about um, fraudulence. Yeah. Honesty, if they know you believe what you're saying, they get on board. Mm -hmm. and, once they start and then once they start understanding like, oh, this is what he feels. Yeah. That's why I hate... When people throw out the devil's advocate, I don't hate it. I'm fine with it. Criticize whoever you want. But like what bothers me a little bit about the devil's advocate shit is like when people go, oh, you're just a devil's advocate. It's like, nah, you're too pussy to admit how you feel. Don't, don't make a caveat for my feelings. I feel this way. You're too pussy to admit that you feel this way. So you're trying to call me a devil's advocate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Because it removes the cowardice from you. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're just saying that because you want to have the opposite feeling. No, I feel this way. Mm -hmm. I feel that Kanye takes dicks away from women. Mm 
Yeah. That's how I feel. Oh, you're just trying to have a different take. No, no, I feel that way. <laughs> you're afraid so, of the way you feel. Without context, that is a wild statement. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that is true. Some people are just going to see this clip like, what the fuck is I he talking about? <laughs> and you know what? I don't care. I feel this way. So, <laughs> Good on you, bro. But do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, the devil's advocate is such an easy way to, like, uh, discredit or disregard someone's opinion. Yeah. yeah. From the average person that's, not, that's afraid of their own feelings. Mm -hmm. But that's, I think that the reason why that might happen to you, because there are some people that are just playing devil's advocate for Oh, there's the times when we just play devil's advocate, for so sure. It's, like, yes, it's hard to distinguish just the shock jock person from... There's the person time. We do, hey, we do both. Hey, you know what? But And that's what I'm saying. So you're going to get it sometimes. You hey, know what? Uh, here's the thing. And this is what, what, what is so hard to understand, but it's only understood really in the context of comedy. And it's more so in the context of podcasts because so many of us are doing podcasts now. But like when you're on stage, on stage should be a feeling environment. We're not on stage for the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Or the lie. We're on stage for the feeling. The feeling is true. There's nothing more annoying than an audience member fact-checking you. It's like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, this is outside of facts. This is facts, no feelings. That's where the, That's, the ethos of this. Yeah. So, like, when, when I'm saying this shit about Belichick being a trash coach, he might objectively be a good coach. Yeah. But my feeling... Mm -hmm. I have this feeling yeah. like he's whack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's whack. And I'm telling you, that's how I feel. And I'm going to justify it whatever goofy ass ways I'm going to justify it. Yeah. But I do have that feeling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you're right. A hundred percent. Sometimes we just make an absurd argument. Of course. Yeah. But generally There's no speaking, rules to this shit. Feelings, no facts. We are, we are a feeling podcast. We are feeling comics. We are emotional people. Mm -hmm. That's what we ride on. P uh, Jim Norton said the most brilliant thing, brilliant description of Patrice. He goes, Patrice lived his life like a movie was being made about him, and he yeah, was going to so have good. to watch it with all of his closest friends. And they would call out all of his... And they would call out all his bullshit. So yeah, in every great. interaction he was with somebody, he would call them out on being phony, because if he didn't, when he watched this movie of his life with his boys later, but, oh, you're just going to let him talk to you like yeah. that? Uh, you're going to... Yeah. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Keith like, Robinson also had a profound ass oh, thing where Keith's he was like, was great. some of that is fear. Like, they all talked about how, like, what an asshole he was on set or whatever. And he goes, a lot of that is fear, too. Yeah. You are afraid of not being good enough when you get the shot. So you self sabotage. And that's what's also really interesting about Patrice is I've never seen a more confident comic on stage in my life. Mm hmm. And to still have that fear, it's just an interesting, like, juxtaposition. Bro, you know what happened to me after watching this doc? It. It it humanized him, which was a letdown. Hmm. I want to see Superman be human. He's your Superman. He was Superman. He was Iron Man. You know what I mean? Like he was a superhero to me. And watching this made me realize he was a man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a flawed man, a scared man as well. Mm -hmm. And that made his death. 10 times more fucking tragic. Yeah. When Superman dies, it was okay. Yeah. Because he wasn't a human being. Mm. You know what I mean? Like he didn't, to me, I didn't build up a relationship with him. I was too in awe of him to build up a relationship. I, I saw him, I met him a few times. I was too in awe to mm. try to build a relationship with him. Yeah. That's how high I rank him. And when I saw that, I wasn't sad when he died. Yeah. Because he wasn't even a human being. Mm. Right. He was beyond that. You know, so when I watched it, all of a sudden he became a human being. And afterwards, I was fucking heartbroken, bro. You know what else they touch on toward the end? And it's something when we talk about Chappelle and Patrice and I put Chappelle above, I forgot. So Chappelle, I love for a lot of his shit after, like for Equanimity and for Bird Revelation. And the other one he did with the he saves, but he rapes. But Chappelle was still like tapping into that. Patrice was still getting better. Mm -hmm. Elephant in the Room was one of the, maybe the best hour special I've ever seen. Yeah, awesome. Then he followed up with an album that I think is better, better than, than that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Patrice was hit, figuring out, he had seen, okay, this is how I do this comedy. Yeah. Where I'm telling the truth, but it's palatable for you. And that's where I'm like, oh, fuck. That's where it felt really tragic to me. Is this guy was still getting better yeah. at 43 or whatever it was. He had really, really figured it out now. He was about to hit another level. And I forget that 10 years later. But then when I watch this, I'm like, yo, fuck. This guy was about to be. And you think about what we've pushed back against, which is the PC culture and shit. If yeah. we had him, I don't know if our fight is nearly as hard. 
I mean, it's just like he's taking care of a lot of it. He's just getting bigger and bigger, and it's like, what are we worried about? He would have got canceled. He wouldn't have given a fuck though. I People, know, but I'm just saying, he like he would have been toxic. Yeah. The most yeah. highest level of toxic, he would have been that because he keeps it just too real. And yeah. people aren't ready for that. He died so we could be great. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Patrice. Thank you. My bank account appreciates you, Patrice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whatever. So I would, I, I, guys, we'll try to put a link or some pl- way where you could watch it. Please watch it if you care about comedy and you're just curious about this guy who, uh, unfortunately, will probably be um, forgotten in comedy history. And uh, when Bill Burr, I'll say this. Yeah, he will be forgotten in comedy history, but he will 100 percent live on through the people he influenced. Yeah. Like uh, we were just talking to a bunch of comics after a party. We were talking about like who people are influenced by and you could see them in their comedy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And um, most people don't know where I come from. Mm-hmm. Like we could think of other kind of famous comics, be like, oh, he's kind of like a tell, or he's kind of like Louie, or he's kind of like this, or he's kind of like Eddie Murphy was like prior, et cetera. Yeah. And um, we were, they came to me and they're like, yeah, I don't know who you, I, I don't know who you are. And it was a compliment at first because I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, like I'm unique. And I'm like, no, 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 I, it's Patrice. Like this is, that is the lane, that is the, the funnel that mm-hmm. I come from. So my success and. All the other people Patrice influence is a legacy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So maybe he gets forgotten in the casual fan, but like as long as I'm alive, I will give all the fucking credit to the most influential person I've ever, you know, seen in comedy and the greatest comic that I've ever seen, hands down. Man, I wish I remember. There was one other line from Robert Kelly, I think. I fucking wish I remembered. I remember the Keith Robinson line stuck out to me. What was the Bobby Kelly thing? I can't remember. If if I remember, I'll come back to it. Oh, is it about uh, him feeling... Was it uh, insecurity of Patrice's? Maybe. It was toward the end. He said something. I'm like, God damn, I wish I fucking remember what it was. The... Having the baby shit was rough. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was rough. Kept keeping the pregnancy test in a drawer. And his girl saw the pregnancy test because he asked his... Well, he didn't ask his girl, but he was like... I would feel uncomfortable bringing a kid into this world because I don't think I'm going to be here for a long time. I don't want to leave you with a kid. Mm-hmm. But it is your choice. So you but it is your do. choice, and you do whatever you want to do. And they ended up not you know, terminating the pregnancy. And like months later, I guess, she yeah. opened up one of these drawers and found the pregnancy test. And she's like, yo, what's this about? He goes, put that uh, put that back in there and don't close the drawer. And he, he never would, spoke about it. And he wouldn't even look. He's watching TV, didn't even look at, yeah, look at it at all. He stayed on the TV, put that back in the drawer. And that's the one time you've seen Patrice not own his emotions and his feelings. That's how much it fucked with him. Bro, Hundred percent, great observation. He didn't. He wasn't truthful about what that was to him. Everything else, he'll talk to his mom about jerking off and eating pussy or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. But like that, I can't. I can't deal with that. There's a the scene with his stepdaughter. Oh, his, yeah. His girl had a daughter already, and when she speaks about him, yeah, it's profound. She's like, he's the reason for my confidence. Yeah. She's like, I, I have a big head. I love my big head because Patrice made me love my big head. And he always told me, you, nobody, Is you need to love you. control how you feel. Yeah. You're going to love yourself. Like seeing, that's what I'm talking about. Like the effect that you have on human beings, if you live your life in a way that is uh, impactful, you, he continues to exist. And maybe that's corny to say, I don't give a fuck. But that motherfucker continues to exist in her, in us, in all these people. And, I see, uh, I see him in Bill Burr. Yeah. And Bill, they're, they're peers. Bill, but Bill always says this guy's this guy's better than when all. When you when you talk about like comics that are based on feeling, yeah, Bill Burr is all feeling. Yeah, mm-hmm. like he's clever, but literally, I started punching the muffins. Wham, wham, wham! Like that is visceral feeling. Yes, right. And he is these Boston guys, man. Best comics in the world come from Boston. But yeah, he is feeling. Bobby Kelly is feeling. Yeah, you know, like telling you, man. <sighs> There's something there. Well, I was even going to say, first of all, he says shit like, we thought we would learn something, and then Patrice had already figured it out fucking years ago. Like, yeah. he was always so far ahead of us. But you'll see it in the moments where Bill Burr is, like, up there, pontificating, doesn't give a fuck how the audience feels. I'm sure he would have gotten there on his own, but I think a part of that is also, that's Patrice. And Bill Burr always looked at Patrice like, that's the fucking best yeah. guy. That's what I want to be. Yeah. Who gives a fuck if they're not laughing? I live in my honesty. I live in my emotion. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing I was fascinated by is 
how can he be so honest with his girl and talk about her like that on stage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she love him the way he does. Like, that is... She came into the game, bro. She knew what it was. Oh. He kept it with her. He kept it honest with her the whole time. This is what yeah. it is. It's funny to see like how that was crazy. like mythology builds around figures. Uh, there was one story that was a little bit of a letdown for me. The story about how Patrice first did stand up yeah, yeah, yeah. had changed through time. And this is how you get Cyclopses or Cyclopsi or whatever the fuck that is. Like a Cyclops started out as a big guy who was just missing one of his eyes. And then someone's like, yeah, they're fucking these huge dudes. And then the guy had one eye. And then three or four people you tell that story to later, it's they had one eye in the center of their head and they were yeah. 18 feet tall, et cetera. And like the story that was always going around about the first time Patrice did stand up was that he was heckling a comic on stage. And the comic said, well, why don't you come up here and do stand up? And then he did. And he just started murdering. Yeah. And then he, that was stand up after that. And in the movie or the doc, it's, he started heckling the comic and then after the show went up to him and was like, I was just helping you out, man. I was, and then he was like, yeah, you should try it out. And then he tried it out later. Yeah. But he didn't go up on stage that night. Right. Mm. And Goldman talked about, though, he had this like, uh, Patrice had this joke that was like, I don't like being the fat spokesperson or whatever. But it was like a jokey joke. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then Goldman said, I came back a few months later and he wasn't doing it. And I was so happy. Yeah. That Patrice moved on from because I was like, oh, that's just not a Patrice thing. Yeah, I mean, he's probably early in the game, but then Goldman was like, he was done with that so quickly. That's not what he was about. But it was such a great joke. It was a great joke, but he just had like fat people like go like fat people like acknowledge him on the street. Yeah, like that. He just something like he's like, what's up, brother? Like, what, what do you want me to do? For you? <laughs> <laughs> but like, what's beautiful about that is it's not. Again, that's there's nothing clever there. Yeah. Yeah. There's no trick. You know what I mean? That's like you know, found like a hack on our DNA to get elicit a reaction. It's literally just that's a hilarious feeling. That I, I can't relate to that, but I can see a fat guy look at another fat guy like we eating later. You know yeah, I, mean? yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't know. He's just fucking. This is the best. All right, guys, uh, we're gonna take a break and save your asses some money. This is all we do. You listen to this podcast, you make money. We the goats, yo. Simple as that. We really are. Yeah. How are we going to save him some money right now, Akash? Student loan refinancing. Oh, we should we should just give him some money back? I think that's what so, you do. So, so it's not only are we going to save him money on the refi, we're also just going to give him some some cash? Oh, we finna. Is, is that what they oh, get? Is we finna. A, a cash bonus? $100. That seems like an earnest thing to do. Yo, who are we, AOC? Oh, shit, we might be. Hey, we out here handing out ducats. Ducats. We doing it. It might be Andrew Yang, bro. Hey, oh, Yang gang. Yang gang. Shouts to the minorities in politics <laughs> is giving people money <laughs> that's <laughs> the only way to get elected <laughs> <laughs> um all right so yeah white people run on i'm gonna let you white people keep your money <laughs> <laughs> so but for real uh earnest is this uh amazing company that's basically gonna try to get you to save as much money as you possibly can on your student loans you're gonna refinance your student loans they're gonna give you money so you can save money if there's any way to save money on your student loans, they're going to figure it out. Refinance at a lower rate, combine all your payments into one. They're going to figure out how to save That's you. That's literally what their company does. Yep. They look at your student loans and they go, how can you pay less? That's it. This and is if, a no-brainer. And if you got questions, you get an actual human being instead of the fucking bot. Uh, that's, that's the other thing when you're dealing with like big money amounts and yeah. you have to just trust the questionnaire on the website fuck that i need to speak to a human being yep. it's like when you uh it's like when you're parking and you have to ask a stranger if it's okay to park yeah here. like yeah, you yeah. see all the instructions but right. you need to put it on him yes because if you do get a ticket you're gonna walk up to that motherfucker uh, yeah. and be like oh how are we splitting this this the parking motherfucker uh -huh. Ernest.com got parking motherfucker that's what i'm talking about so Ernest is gonna save you all your money listen you all got student loans be honest you do you have them just go save some money and get some cash back, all right? You're going to need a $100 cash bonus when you visit earnest.com slash flagrant to refinance your student loans, okay? Now, this is not available in all states, and terms and conditions do apply, but that is earnest, E-A-R-N-E-S-T dot com slash flagrant to refinance your student loans. Go there right now. Now, let's get back to the show. Oh, by the way, getting back to the show, um, we got some dates coming up. Talking yes, about sir. shows, yes, baby. Sir. Yes, we got sir. some real dates. You can go to theandrewschultz.com to check out all mine. Um, it was absolutely crazy. Oh, Miami show and Mad Love. Thank you guys so much. I crazy. felt like a fucking rock star, bro. It was crazy. I mean, the show, the first one sold out in three minutes. The next one sold out in 60 seconds. I didn't even know that was physically possible. That's insane. But we'll see you at the Miami Improv. And, uh, it was like a Jordan drop. Son, I felt like sneakers. Yeah. I felt like sneakers in that moment. But Miami, thank you all for showing love, man. We really appreciate it. And uh, we hope you're doing well, you know, y'all proud out here. And I'm excited to get back on stage after not being on stage for a year. So this is going to be an interesting couple shows. But uh, I think we're going to add a couple more shows. I'll post about it on Instagram. 
and I'll tell you when the ticket links are going to go up so you guys can be ready to go and have everything locked and loaded. But again, Miami, thank you all for all showing me love. You always show me love and uh, we'll see you soon. Yep. Uh, also, DeAndreSchultz.com. Um, we're going to do a, you know, a tour announce video, but I, I want you to uh, go check out what we got there on uh, DeAndreSchultz.com right now. That's what I'll say. We're going to do a big tour announce video. I would go to DeAndreSchultz.com right now because this asshole army and his family we're talking to. Check out the dates that are up there right now. and Maybe you get a little uh, head start on everybody Ooh. that's trying to get some tickets. Okay. Uh, some cities already sold out. Salt Lake sold out. Columbus sold out. Nashville sold out. Um, Atlanta, Raleigh, West Palm Beach, Phoenix, and Tampa may or may not be available on the website, mm. on the comedy club's website. Mm. Before we do this announce video. Mm. So that's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. Love you guys. Yep. We might add some more shows in these other states. And who knows if the requirements start to loosen up. Maybe they start to allow more people in. We add a couple more chairs. But go there. Check it out. Akash, and what you got? Go to AkashSing.com. I got two more shows coming up that I'll tell you about in April. But for March, let's talk about Philly, March 4th through 6th at Helium. And St. Louis, Helium, March 18th through 20th, I believe. Whatever that Thursday through Saturday is. So go there. AkashSing.com. Gang, gang, gang. All right, let's get back to the show. All right, guys, we back. Let's um, let's have another conversation about a comedian that um, uh, was was out the game for a little minute, had a little <laughs> controversy. Yep. You know, uh, the other Chrissy D. I think that's <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> Chris D'Elia, uh release an apology video. What did you guys think of it? I at the beginning I was like, oh, this is good. He's handling it well. He's saying a lot of good things. He seems honest. But then by the end, I was like, oh, you didn't address the main thing we want explained. Mm -hmm. The main thing I want explained is what's up with these young girls that are accusing you. Right. And you just address that with two lines in an eight-minute apology video. The same line twice. He's Everything a, I did was consensual and legal. That's it? Right. And I guess what you're saying is it's not technically illegal to talk to underage girls. That's not an illegal thing. But it is the thing that bothered you. Yeah, and I don't, apparently there's, look, there's a lot of smoke. I saw certain texts that were like, maybe illegal, maybe legal. It was like real borderline. Right, and then right. there's just so much smoke. That's what we want addressed. You cheat on your wife. Okay. You have yeah. a sex addiction. I get it. You're a good looking, famous, hilarious dude. Yeah. Sure. Pound all the pussy in the world. I don't give a fuck. I want to know what's up with these young girls. That's where I need an explanation. Yeah. And again, I've said this probably before. I don't want to just sit here and like shit on Chris or bury Chris. He was, I liked the guy. He was nice to me when I was a new comic, supportive yeah, very nice in a guy. way. And now maybe it's because he wanted to fuck me. I don't know. But yeah. but in a game where everybody treats you like shit, this is a guy that was nice to me. And so I don't want to sit here and act like I'm above him and fuck him. Yeah. I want him to be innocent, but I need him to explain it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't just gloss over that and say with one line, oh, it's legal. Nah, bruh. What was the, the specific thing that you needed an explanation for? I mean, there's screenshots of him, like, texting girls, oh, they're 17, and then, like, nine months later, he'll text them back, or 10 months, or whatever it is. Right. That's not a full year. If you wait a full year, and then you... I need to know, did you know these girls were uh, underage? And if you knew, did you stop? Mm. If you knowingly message an underage girl, that's weird to me. Or if you find out she's underage, and then you keep messaging, right. that's... That's fucked. If you mess it, we all DM when we were single. That's yeah. what you do. Yeah. If you're Chris D'Elia, you're DMing. You're going to hit a couple girls that are probably like, yo, I'm young. And then you need to be the fuck out. That's yeah. how that works. Yeah. I don't, I'm not canceling him because he cheated on his wife and he had a sex addiction. Yeah. Who give a fuck? That's for you and her. I would cancel you if I found out you were knowingly messaging underage girls. And little things even within the messages back in the day, I remember being like, that's kind of weird. It was pointed out to me, honestly. But like the way he would message them, it's like he knows he's talking to underage girls. Saying shit like tee hee. So I need T yeah. he explained. Your issue. <laughs> I need a T he explanation. If that's how you message a 30 year old, okay, you're kind of weird, but that's it. Yeah. But it seems like you know, you ain't saying T he to no grown ass bitch. Grown ass bitch. <laughs> I'm going to say T he to a 30 year old bitch. So you felt like the apology was for the wrong thing. I feel like mm. he. So you wanted. Yes. You didn't want an apology because you don't need someone to, to apologize to you for crushing puss. No, I love that. I'm faithful. You go ahead and do all the cheating that yeah, I would yeah, never do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I live vicariously through you. Right. You wanted an explanation, not an apology. Yes. For the shit that you thought was super sus. Yes. The accusations that you thought were super yes. sus. You're aware that he didn't do anything illegal. 
you're aware that he didn't do anything that wasn't consensual, but there was behavior that might not have been illegal, but looked highly frowned upon and looked like if things went a certain way, it could lead to illegal behavior. And I'm not Fair? positive. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if a girl tells you she's 17 and you're messing with her nine months later, she's likely turned 18, which is still kind of weird to me, to be honest, but right, right, I right. can't throw you in jail for that. But if it's nine months, it's like, no, you, you couldn't wait the full fucking year. You don't have another date in Utah coming up that you a year you can't come back. She's right. she gonna be 18, married by then, 19. bro. She's from Utah, though. <laughs> you have three sister hey, wives, hey, bro. If that was his explanation, okay. I just need the explanation. <laughs> These bitches in Utah get married young. <laughs> what you gotta give it where you fit in. Oh, I'm just John Smith out here, bro. When in Rome, give me an explanation. That's what I need from you. Right. Did you knowingly message underage girls? Because it kind of seems like you did. Mm. And that's what I need explained. I'm not the fucking pound of flesh guy. I don't want to sit here and feast on your apology. As apologies go, he did a good job. But that's not the... Exp I'm looking for an explanation of I something I forgive else. him for cheating on his fiance, bro. You don't? I do. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At first, I didn't. Okay. And then when he apologized to me, I was like, I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need everybody to apologize to me for cheating on their girl, bro. That's what I'm saying. I need you to put because you broke my trust. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, here I am just waiting this whole time, feeling cheated on without any apology. And now that I got the apology, I I can I can move on. <laughs> I feel like I can I can mend. Your relationship or something. Son. I don't know. It is a weird suggestion, right? What do you mean? Like, to apologize for that. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. That's apology for his wife. I don't... I would understand apologizing if you were, like, a Christian comic or some shit, and you, yeah. like, led people to think that you were out here, you know, uh, faithful, faithful leading a certain life. But, like, I think we knew... Yeah, you ain't Carl Lentz, bro. Yes. Yeah. Carl Lentz got to apologize to me. Yeah. Because you were preaching some shit to me and you didn't live it up to it. It was fraudulent to bring back the d earlier discussion. It was fraudulent. Chris D'Elia, you knew was fucking. To be honest, I'm more impressed he could fuck all these girls and still be that funny. <laughs> Real talk, Like, bro. think about That's fucking impressive. That's impressive. But I need something else explained and you didn't. Mm. That's how I feel. Mm. Al, am I crazy? Tell me if I went too hard. So I didn't think I went that hard. No, nah, I actually agree with you. I Me don't. or Akash about the Akash. apology? But also <laughs> what about me? Nah, not at all. You don't think that you didn't feel like that you deserved I, an I apology think, for think, him cheating on his you, <laughs> I think you deserved it a lot sooner, son. You deserved it a lot sooner, so you would feel better. So I did deserve it. You waited it. too long to feel good. Son, I almost called him one of these days. I was like, you apologize to me That's for cheating on your fiance. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like this is ridiculous, bro. Like, Just left you waiting. So. He you, left me out here just fucking betrayed, in the yo. cold, bro. Embarrassed. I, you were son, embarrassed. You supported this man. I was so embarrassed. I had to move to Miami. <laughs> I had to move to Miami and distract myself, bro, until I got my fucking apology, bro. All right, go. Keep man. going. Man. Nah, so it, the fact that he just tried to change the narrative that the big issue is his sex addiction when that wasn't the big thing that he went into hiding for the big thing was all the smoke about these young kids is and anybody so it's like i yeah. think that needs to be addressed first and foremost and this should have came a lot sooner like you just wait wait until the smoke dies down and then hoping that you're just gonna pop up give an apology and now you're all good again like no you should have addressed this shit immediately like think if you were that dude's uh, daughter who was like 17 who texts him like hey um you're too old for me and then he waits and comes back later mm -hmm. like if i'm that girl's father i want to kill this dude but what if now he's learning how to wait like yeah i mean that's impressive <laughs> to that's be honest. Like, yeah, what if that's I'm, the lesson like it doesn't have no to happen right now no you could perfect. be no one's perfect i'm not saying we should crucify dude i'm just saying we got to keep this the same energy that we give to anybody who with this type of fuck shit behavior and i'm just not for that Mm -hmm. That's just me personally. And specifically, what is the behavior that... The predatory behavior. Like, you, you're, you're a grown man. Like, why are you trying to chase after, like, barely legal girls? If he's talking about how many girls he's sleeping with at all times... Yeah, yeah. And there's gorgeous girls. He can choose all he wants. He's, he's spending a lot of time and energy yeah. on girls of a certain age. So, a lot of smoke. Yeah. So, I know it's cloudy of, like, figuring out what, what situation. He should have been on that statement forensically proving each accusation at least so yeah. he has six accusations nail down every one of those accusations we're still going to have a feeling like there's six there's probably 
uh, more that we don't know about. You got got away with somehow, but he didn't. He didn't do that. And so the fact that they weren't addressed, it's like it mm-hmm. leaves something still. I don't really feel there's right. something in the air. Yeah. He's going to be fine. His fans are going to hate that I said this. I don't, wa- I don't want the guy to be fucking crucified. Now, if he, he knows these girls are underage and he's messaging underage girls, if those messages come out, yeah. he should be punished. As is, I just need an explanation. Right now, that's what I'm looking for. <sighs> you, you hurt by the cheating? No, I just, the more I think about it, I, ex- I accept his apology. For the cheating? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what made you do that? <laughs> he felt honest. It was the it's the Christianity in me. Bro. Oh yeah, <laughs> I had to forgive him for yeah. cheating, bro. Yeah, and I had to forgive him for having sex with uh, hundreds of beautiful women, because that is that's unforgivable. Uh, that's- but no, no. But for real, if you're literally gonna fuck the most beautiful women in America in literally every single state at, for a living. <laughs> I'm going to need an apology for that. Yeah, yeah. I, I am going to need an apology. And the it's fact that he was man enough to come and do that. Yeah. I I appreciate that. Yeah. I, what, Al? <laughs> what, Al? Just, I understand you guys are focusing on another part of this. <laughs> and that's why we have this, you know, collaborative effort here on the podcast. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um... I, I, your point resonates with me. Maybe he could have offered a little bit more explanation about the text messages Mm -hmm. with the underage girls Mm -hmm. right yeah even though it looks like nothing happened with them Mm -hmm. which is important Mm -hmm. yeah but explanation at least like why were you continuing the convo kind of knowing yeah there's proof that he continued the convo yeah yeah I think nine or ten months later. Again, and, yeah. wait, wait the year, bro. There's if you wait the year and you're like, God, like wait a year. Blackmailing naked photos, things like that. There's more. There's we're not covering everything, so let's. Oh really? Let's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's, but the important thing is that he cheated on his wife and he feels bad about it. I I just think it's so admirable. <laughs> no, you're. I, I'm, that's a good point. You know, I you sometimes. No, no. Like some people are in touch with like their audience and like their people and yeah. like. To come out and be like, I'm sorry for absolutely demolishing puss for years. Yeah. And then to be like, I apologize. Yeah. Forgiven. Wow. You're a bigger man than most, man. You're a, you're a good person. I am. All right, guys. That's been another episode of Flagrant 2. Uh, we will see you this Friday at uh, Patreon. Patreon.com slash Flagrant 2. Come join the asshole army over there. We will see you. That raw, unfiltered flagrancy. Hmm. I think there's a possibility we might get our boy Marky Mark back. Oh, shit. I think by Friday? Mm. What do you think, Doug? Yeah, I think we got him. I think we got it back by Friday, so that would be quite exciting. That would be quite exciting. That would be quite exciting. Okay, guys, we'll see you over there. Patreon.com slash flagrant2. If not, we see you next Tuesday. Peace.